going on, everybody? It is episode 549 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I'm here with my co-host. Once again, would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Today, Brett went in like a drill sergeant yep. on the show because Madam Web has you in a bad mood. Oh. I get it. I understand. It does. It, uh, okay, not, not in a bad mood, but in like a why must I torture myself for my work mood, which is kind of the same thing. But it was a movie. Was okay, we're being a little bit dramatic. That review is up right now, guys. The review is After up. After this episode, yep. you should go and watch that. Uh, we talked about it. Don't go watch it now. Just wait until the show exactly. is over. And we have Phil on the show. Hello, everybody. How you doing? How you doing, buddy? Good, good to see you, you all. I usually do an intro. Uh, oh, yeah. I am uh, Phil Labonte, lead singer of the heavy metal band All That Remains, anti-communist and counter-revolutionary. Actually, and some... Talent. some t- and talent. <laughs> this isn't a green room, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there's no green room. Surprise, this is a purple... <laughs> well, I mean, there's green behind me, so it's technically a green I room. Can't, we can't start off like this. They, they're starting it. They're mentioning it in the Super Chat, so we're going to have to address really? it regardless. <laughs> We have talent on the show today. <laughs> you know, unironically, the, sh- the job title for me is on-air talent. So I get to call myself talent, you too. Are, you are. You're absolutely on-air talent. <sighs> um, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to create our own green room up here that's purposely. We just hire people to interrupt you and, and bother you while you're doing stuff. It's like a porta potty oh, Yes. Good. It's painted in the PCC colors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, guys, we got a bunch of stuff to get into today. I promise we will not interrupt you if you're, if you're uh, <laughs> trying to keep to yourself. We'll leave you alone. But uh, if you want to be here and hang out with us, you can. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. But before we get into that, would you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already? Now that I think about it, the chat... Like before the show, the waiting room, that's kind of our green room. That's our green room Actually, for the people yeah. watching. That's a good Kinda point. Is, and you is, have right. no right to privacy in that green room. No right, no right to privacy ever. <laughs> so guys, hit the like <laughs> button, subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Please and thank you very much. Uh, share this video with your friends so that more people can come in here. Perhaps they feel differently about behavior in green rooms. Perhaps they want to come in here and have their two cents known. Maybe they want to disrupt us. If you want to do that, if you want to disrupt us like Phil did the other day, you can super chat $20 and over and we'll interrupt the discussion. We'll read it right then and there. You will be the Phil Labonte of the super chats. Domestic Tourist said it would be a good band name, Mary. There we go. That was, oh, that yes. We got into a tiff about that. I said the Domestic Tourists would be a great band name. Mary says no. Tourist? Yes. That's how like, you pronounce like it? Domestic you know, tourist? If it's, if it's like a pop punk band or yeah. like some kind of like, you know, kind of like young hip kind of band that's not like moody, right? Yeah. Like they can't be like... Pop punk is not hip. No, it's or okay. yes. not now. I mean, <laughs> that's, 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 that's why I'm, I'm feeling around. It's an idea that I'm still kind of working through. So It has to play against the name. Your, your music style has to play against the name. It has to be more upbeat. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See? Okay. I, think I just so. think domestic, is it supposed to be like domestic terrorists? Yeah. Yes. It's supposed to be that? Yes. Kind of a play on, yeah. A, so it'd be like, they, like you could have like them have them like wearing masks, but instead of like having bombs strapped to them, they could have like luggage. It's like cognitive uh, dissidence. You know, or something silly, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got another from Hunter Allen. Hey, from a UPS driver to my favorite background noise. Also, I need Phil to say boys, 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 boys. Boys, 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 boys. We are background noise. That should be a merch too. We are background noise. That's all we need to be. Yes, be. it is. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about today, guys. What are we going to get into? First things first, you saw a little bit of it yesterday. Ugly magazine covers. So hot right now in Hollywood. That's what everybody seems to want to do. Of sorry. Course, sorry. Not hot. Not hot. Uh, of course, oh, what yeah. we're talking about is the, uh, the magazine cover for Rolling Stone featuring Kristen Stewart and the GQ cover uh, with Killian Murphy. But there's other such examples of this. The masculinization of women, the feminization of men. We'll get into it. We'll talk about it. What is Hollywood's obsession with deconstructing idealistic Western beauty standards? Who Actually, knows? talking about de- deconstruction, me and Mary were talking about that a little bit before. Yeah. Well, we're going to get into it. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Lana Del Rey. You're supposed to... Wait, what was the saying again, Mary? It's uh, it's reject Reject Taylor. Taylor Swift. Embrace Lana Del Rey. She is to modernity. She is, she is Taylor to, Swift is to, to modernity, modernity as Lana Del Rey is to tradition. But people are mad because she posted a picture with a gun. Albeit with horrible She went to discipline. a shooting range in LA and yeah. everyone freaked out. She went to Terran Tactical. Yeah, I love her. Yeah. And everyone should shut their faces. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, glad that's settled. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to talk Done. about that. We're also going to talk about Leia Ramini, who put out a very long tweet where she ostensibly says that she's still being stalked and harassed by the Scientologists. I'm literally picturing Tom Cruise in all of his movies where he's running. It's just a long shot of him running, and he's just following behind her on foot as she drives. But he's on the rooftops. <laughs> yes, yes. So. But no, he's like in a limo that's crawling behind her as she walks down the sidewalk. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. Also, J-Lo is just out humiliating Ben Affleck. And I do mean humiliating she do now? and creating one of the most self-indulgent projects you will ever see in your entire life. I'm really willing to risk the demonetization today so you can see this trailer for it's this movie. It's insane. It's insane. That, uh, that's an understatement. I can't come up with a word for this. She's this. actually peak narcissism totally unchecked narcissism and is embarrassing Ben Affleck in the process. That's awful to hear because I mean, well, because he's with her again. Exactly, that's why exactly. because now he's exactly. trapped. It's like, man, you are free and you just got hugged up again. Yeah. Man. Must be a Panther in the sack. What do you do? She, I, whatever, whatever she's doing no, literally, to him, it's, she's doing it right. One of the scenes is. in this movie she made <laughs> is her doing a music video at a sex addicts anonymous meeting. <laughs> We'll get into it. All right, guys. That's just a teaser. So um, if you guys are ready, then. We ready. can just go ahead and get started. Phil, you ready? Let's go. Mary, you ready? I'm ready. She's ready. All right, let's go ahead and get started then, shall we? A couple of announcements right off the bat. There are a few. So as was reported the other day, the Deadpool trailer, which I was arguing with people a little bit in the chat earlier, I said, look, I think the movie will do really, really well. I think Deadpool is unbelievably popular. I don't think one singular movie can save the fledgling MCU. I do not believe that that's No, possible. just like Guardians of the Galaxy no. 3 didn't save the even MCU, this, even though that was profitable. Or a, a better example would be Spider-Man No Way Home, which made a billion dollars, or, or like two, like two, almost $2 billion, or whatever it was, is not going to save the MCU. And for this, uh, even if this movie makes a billion dollars, I don't think it saves Marvel. But what happened was it got, con it got ca uh, called the most uh, watched movie trailer in its first 24 hours, passing like 300 some million. It was 365 views. million views in the first 24 hours, except they scammed us. Yep. So hard. They included the 124 million people watching the Super Bowl broadcast yeah. because it was one of the commercials. That's a scam. That is, uh, it's like that old picture of Bill Gates with the book that says How to Lie with Numbers. What was the movie that it said it beat in the in the numbers for uh, trailer I views? think it was the, I think it was Endgame. Okay, well, no, Endgame no, no. stays ah, on top it was, it might, No, it might have been No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home. Whatever it was, this was a scam. Yep. Uh, anyways, yes. Oh, and somebody in the chat says, you really calling Kristen Stewart ugly? Lol, okay. No, we're not calling Kristen Stewart ugly. We're saying that mm -mm. they are making makeup and they were putting her in photo shoots that are done ugly. Yeah, her, her, her aesthetic choices are intentionally unappealing yep. and yeah. a deconstruction of typical beauty standards. I think that she's naturally gorgeous she and she's hates beautiful. herself for it and is trying to work against that. Yes. All right, so um, speaking of Madam Webb, this is big news, guys. I, again, I can't confirm whether this is true or not. The, the no, source, no fact checking, the source is literally yet, no. Madam Webb updates, but it says <laughs> man removed from Madam Webb screening for masturbating to Sydney Sweeney, Ju Sydney Sweeney's Julia Carpenter Spider Woman. Look, that could happen. To anyone. Okay, okay, which like, one of you like, did this? Pee Wee Herman out. just appeared out of nowhere. It was literally Pee Wee Herman, but his ghost. His ghost, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Okay, so. You know, there. Uh, listen, there are two sides to every story. <laughs> uh, and, and to be fair, the movie was pro the movie theater was probably empty enough that he just thought it was okay. Someone commented he was trying to shoot some webs. He was. Oh, he was web shooting. <laughs> look, uh, are they assuming his gender? How dare they? <laughs> You look at that picture and you're like, well, who would do that? And also it makes him creepy because they're definitely not supposed to be adults in this movie. Sydney Sweeney is the yeah, world's sure. oldest teenager in this film. It was ridiculous when she played a 16-year-old in Euphoria. It's even more ridiculous in this movie. Yep. Totally unbelievable. Uh, you know, like I said, like another one of the comments says, like, it wasn't me. I didn't get caught. So, you know, when they're on the police, they're listening to the police scanner and they identify Cassie, Dakota Johnson's character, as in her early 30s. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to bring in some levity where she heard that and was like, early 30s. Yeah. Like, nope. no, she's not even good enough to pull off that type of humor. Dakota Johnson is awful in this movie. Yeah. All right. We have another $20 from Greg Duvier. Phil, you failed multiple gold selling rock star. That has opened for bands like Metallica, 
I, non-rock star who has never opened for any band, is going to tell you how to act professionally in the green room. God. I need new music. Yeah, uh, maybe four weeks for new music, right? Maybe, well, actually, wait, what, what's, what's today? What's today? It's the 15th. The music might Today's go out for milk and cigarettes. Maybe so. six weeks. Yeah, six, because okay. we're, we're still in February. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to get it out the last week of February. might be the first week of April, but new music is coming. Uh, mixing, mastering, and stuff is going on. It is, it is almost done, so soon. I just got, I just got the cover. We're, we're finishing up the details on that, so you'll start seeing like actual clips and stuff like that in about, about a month. So cool. uh, Thank you for, for still caring. I love you so much. Stop, so he says, stop complaining about adults playing kids in Hollywood. One less kid to get destroyed by them. I mean... Sydney Sweeney started out as a child actress anyway. Yep. Steve Kralik sent $20. Look, I know I made that dumb joke about Sydney Sweeney's humongalongongus dubon honkaroos yesterday, <laughs> but it wasn't me. Perfect. We believe uh, we you. Believe, we believe you, Steve. And also props to Mary for pronouncing that pop uh, like pr correctly on the first. It's try. not. Uh, neither of those are okay. real words. Well, that's, None uh, of these words are in the Bible. All right. <laughs> Have you ever seen that like that uh, Instagram video of the guy who the the weatherman who gets the town name that's like this long correct on the first try? Oh, the it's Icelandic. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why they I, pay him the big yeah. bucks. That's got to be really big bucks because that was one hell of a word. Uh, there's also <laughs> this guy who goes around and he slips in like song lyrics into his weather report. There was the, yeah, he was guy. do he was just doing uh, uh, baby got back. Yep. Uh, he's I hilarious. I, there, I just saw the I saw the, the TikTok. He's sitting there at his car just listen sing along to baby but got back and then like they I guess they challenge him. Yeah. Like, he'll put the video. No, up people, people like leave comments saying do this do song the, yeah. next. Yeah. And he'll great. slide that stuff into it. it's what a what a great way to engage people and have fun. Like kudos to you for making the world smile a little more. All right. Uh, so this is horrible news. Speaking of continued bad news for Madam Webb, it lost out on its Wednesday debut to the Bob Marley movie. Yikes. And to which I said, to put it bluntly, this is embarrassing. And then nobody laughed at it on Twitter. So I'm completely wasted. My humor is wasted on Twitter. It's just sad. Your intelligence yes. is wasted it is. on it's, that. It's a shame. But the point is, is that uh, I was I was thinking about it. It's like, look, Bob Marley was a, a cultural icon that spans multiple generations. So it does make sense. But supposedly people tell me that uh, comic book movie fatigue, superhero fatigue, isn't real. Well, we got another $20 from Carnell. I understand the discourse surrounding Kristen Stewart's recent mag photos. However, I think it's important to point out that the RS aesthetic was chosen to lean into her character promoting in her new film, Love Lies Bleeding. That is true, uh, where she's dating the, the power lifter. Um, well, it's like, is it a gay relationship? Yes. Well, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I think that the film is probably stupid. Um, but that's besides the point. So Bob Marley, uh, and, and so when we were there last night, Madam Webb was like pushed into the corner. It was the redheaded stepchild of the of the theater, yeah. and all the other screens were playing the Bob Marley movie. Yeah, which I, isn't getting good ratings either. It's got like a thirty six on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics. But it's gonna make a profit. Let's hope. Mad Madam Webb. That's still up in the air. Yes. I don't know if Madam Webb will make a profit. I just didn't know that many people cared about Bob Marley. <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, Bob Marley was a huge thing and still is. Yeah. I mean, reggae is like an extremely chill, inoffensive type of music. Like it's not like it's, it's something that most people that like most types of music can be like, okay, I don't find this, you know, grading. It doesn't have any, you know, it's not too fast where, you know, people get all riled up or whatever. It's just chill kind of music. And I think that it, it is, is something that appeals to a, a very, very wide audience. And then the fact that Bob Marley was like a really chill pothead kind of dude. And that appeals to definitely, definitely boomers and Gen X. Well, yeah. let me say this. I would rather the next generation of kids be pothead stoners who were like chill, man, everybody get along. Then than dead dorky from activists who do fentanyl and then lie down on the road saying Ron DeSantis killed me because I'm. <laughs> Thank hey you guys. Can't we all just get along, man? See, this, again, this this is not, it doesn't sound like Bob Marley, but it is chill and inoffensive and, you know, it's like, exactly. yeah, man. So, uh, Madam Webb lost to Bob Marley. Sucks to suck. Yeah. Sucks to suck. All right. Oh, by the way, I, I wanted to point out if you were wondering why Madam Webb was so bad, this is the Rotten Tomatoes scores of the writers of the movie. This is the true definition of failing upward. So, they made Dracula Untold, 25%. The Last Witch Hunter, 18%. Morbius, 15%. <laughs> Gods of Egypt, 14%. And now Madam Webb, that number is incorrect because yeah. it has since lowered. It went it down is now to 15. as well, 
Fifteen percent, and only what was it? Fifty nine percent from audience, yep. which I is would, still way too generous. But I would normally expect that to be in the, like in the seventies for yeah. most of them. But no, it's it's it, it should be way lower than fifty nine percent. Yeah. All right. So uh, not good, ladies and gentlemen. Not good. Mary also found this movie trailer she wanted everyone to watch. This is not the J Lo one. This is hilarious to me. So A twenty four is producing a documentary about mewing. And Do you want to explain to everyone what the hell <laughs> mewing is, Mary? Mewing is a looks maxing tactic that I only heard about years ago because of like 4chan posts getting reposted about it. But basically it's a breathing technique where you uh, press your tongue against the roof of your mouth and okay. keep it from touching your teeth. And it's supposed to make your jawline sharper. Um, so a lot of guys have been doing this to try to make their jawlines sharper. I know Joe Rogan like advertises a product yeah. that does this. This okay. is a big thing. So it's named after John Mew, and this is a documentary about him and his son. It's the story of a father and son fighting to upend the world of orthodontics. <laughs> In their One minds, man. the world faces the world's faces have become severely deformed and must be restored to their beautiful ancestral proportions. Ancestral Here braces are a major part of the problem. Let's uh, let's watch it. A leading London dentist claimed current orthodontic methods sometimes straighten the teeth, but they then ruin the face. I could not I believe that someone could put that in a child's mouth. You might call that child abuse. I would I cause it tranny. Orthodontic treatment flattens faces. In reality, it pulls them back. Better to try and enlarge the jaws than to take the whole lot forward, which also provides room for the teeth. My mouth did change. Why I mean, the, the, the gap the, in the front just think some, They're spending money on this. Well, I'm, I'm wondering why we're I listening to the English talk about teeth. Smiling, <laughs> True. So it was Good wonderful point. for me. I, you know, it was the best thing I could ever have done. It was my objective to get something to go viral. But I was not expecting the mewing thing. Mewing has changed my life. I look better. I'm mewing influence. <laughs> Mike, Mike Mew, I think, has cracked the case. Wait, is that wine? That's scene? crazy. Is that yeah. real? Yes. Yeah. You do have a very good jawline. I tell you what. Yeah, you see. Well, my goodness me. This revolutionary is going to transform the world. I have been expelled. What is the mewing part, though? Like, you just make a noise? Society. When no, no, you press your tongue against the mic. roof of your mouth. It runs for four there, weeks. There's murder cases are only usually two weeks. They're going to decide whether or not to take my license away. I have my license to practice dentistry. Remove. John Mew actually doing a study on twins doesn't exist. You are going up against what seems to be this tidal wave of orthodontists. It's almost like a kind of information warfare that they're Info war? I know I'm right. The orthodontists are absolutely sure I'm wrong. Most people are severely deformed. It's a terrible thing to say, but it's really true. The development of our face has gone wrong. We are no longer very beautiful. What was the worst part of the My job is to create beautiful faces. And anything you can do to make the face better is the right thing. People say, John, you create the best faces in the world. <laughs> You create the best faces. The, best the faces. problem is I'm too far ahead <laughs> of everybody else. <laughs> Open wide is the title. Mm. I just love that, like, <laughs> look, there's... So John Mew's dental license, license actually got revoked a few years ago by the UK Dental Council, and his son is dedicating his career to proving his father right. Very dramatic. Yeah, they're making it and they're spending money to make this. But yeah, mewing is like a thing I've heard about for years. They've got those, uh, they make like plastic things or rubber things that yes. you can those bite things on and, and stuff like, like as well. Special so. gum that you're supposed to chew. Oh, uh, that makes sense too. Um, also, kids aren't really being breastfed as often as they used to be, which yeah. affects their jaw good, formation. Yeah. So, I mean, Somebody I... Somebody in the I, chat pointed that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that could be the case. I mean, it, or it could be, you know... Maybe he's like kind of on to something, but at the same time, I'm like, he's the, the Donald Trump of orthodontics. Uh, he's the he's an English guy. The English are in no position to talk about teeth. He has three teeth. Dentistry. Though. All right, uh, let's talk about the Chiefs. So this was a big yeah. story <laughs> yesterday. So they had their uh, parade. They did win the Super Bowl, and there was a a very big shooting. But it seems that the cops have come out, and they're saying that this was not an act of terrorism. That it was in fact uh, a dispute between several people. So it's it's gang violence. That would I suppose would probably be what I would imagine it is. And is it's it their their 
chief's rally parade yep. for their win. There's there were 22 funny... victims and one person died. That's how you know that it wasn't actually like trying to kill random people. I there guess. was someone there. There was someone because they were aiming at someone. They're trying to get someone else. There was a um, there was a really funny video of Travis Kelsey just looking shit faced singing Garth Brooks. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Oh, Travis or Jason? Travis. Oh, okay. Yep. That seems like, like a Jason thing to do. Tipsy and singing I've Got Friends in Low Places. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, sadly... This is pretty wild. When you guys super chatted about this yesterday, it I, I didn't know whether to believe you. Uh, and in the but chat, Chief, uh, Chief is right. It was the gun's fault. It's, of mm -hmm. course, the gun's fault. We should just take all the guns away. Taylor right? is that crafting fixes, her gun that, control response that at this very everything, moment. That everything, as you know. Yeah. Always does. <laughs> All right. So, Speaking of triggers. Yes. That, that is a fantastic uh, transition there, Mary. Uh, Ralph Fine, Ray Fine says, uh, modern audiences are just too soft. He's against trigger warnings. I, actually, I was thinking about this the other night. So let's read what he says. In a recent interview with the BBC's uh, Laura Kunisberg, uh, who asked if audiences are, quote, too soft, Fine's re remarked, I think they have gotten too soft. I think we didn't used to have trigger warnings. I mean, there are, a very dis there are very disturbing scenes in Macbeth, terrible murders and things, but I think the impact of theater should be that you're shocked and you should be disturbed. I actually agree with this. So what I think it is, is like a lot of times you make something worse for yourself by being warned in advance kind of like how they're like uh, we were just talking dental works so there's like they're like gonna yank a tooth they're like on three one two and then they just do it on two the idea is that you do it without them like working up to it that's the problem so imagine you're watching all of these things and in 10 years everything's gonna have a trigger warning on it because the social norms change so drastically all the time now that what was okay today will be no longer acceptable in 10 years but you allow the kids to better acclimate themselves and i'm, I'm just using kids as an example because yeah. I, I imagine what's sort you allow the audience to better acclimate themselves to ideas that may disturb them by foisting it upon them and not giving them time to kind of clench and uh and clutch their pearls beforehand well that doesn't mean you should show like the most gruesome content Do to it. children on purpose, I don't think that that would be the right way to go. But he's about not. Uh, but we all know that when they say trigger warnings, that's not what people are thinking of. R-rated movies are still R-rated movies. They're talking about G-rated movies that have uh, statements that would now be considered racist because the language <clears throat> is different a hundred years. Or ago. even just like there are themes of family conflict or something. Uh, that's ridiculous. You should. You should but not. If, if there's a scene warnings. of a a gruesome murder in a play or a movie. That then is supposed to should, be a disturbing thing to watch. The rating should already take care of that. If you go to a movie and it's R-rated, uh, when you when you look at the rating, it lists why it's rated this level, right? So it says nudity, drug use, violence, gore. So why like isn't that. that considered the same thing as a trigger warning? And are you against ratings then? No, trigger warning is different. Uh, a rating system is something that the parents can use to uh, guide themselves to see if they want to let their kids watch it. When they're talking trigger warnings here, they're talking about changes in the society, like in social mores, right? How we look at the world is different than it was 100 years ago. So it's not a standardized rating system. Well, then should somebody, I don't know and if I this don't is- necessarily Yeah, I mean, agree. so- I, Oh, go ahead. Well, I just, I feel like, Trigger warnings are very, very specific, whereas ratings are just overall. Yes. Like it's, a, it's, an, it's like, look, this is something where you should be an adult because themes that you may or may not be comfortable with are, are going to be discussed. And the assumption that goes along with that is we don't have to list them. Yes. You're an adult. You should right. be able to handle whatever we throw at you. This is adult content you shouldn't bring children but going to this you know it's a, it's for an adult the trigger warnings are like if you have this specific thing if you have this specific thing it's literally like having a time it's these like types of remarks were common it's like having Beware. a rating system for every individual neurosis yeah. that we could possibly imagine and it's ridiculous rating the rating system is fine you don't need trigger warnings and even the rating system used to be more is is easily manipulatable it yeah, always was. Definitely. So uh, when when the, the example I always give was um, when the Scream franchise came out, Wes Craven spent like weeks going back and forth with the MPAA because they wouldn't approve the the gore, you know, the gore in the movie. He had to keep making cuts, keep making cuts so that he could get it down to what they would consider acceptable uh, to the point of like shots had to be sped up to make them less scary. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, when Scream 2 got made, he made the most violent, fucked up cut he could possible and sent it to them so that when he finally whittled it down to what he actually wanted, 
they would approve it. So it's kind of like the big yeah. ask. Hey, can I have this in my movie? Yeah. And then they're like, no. And he's it, like, oh, how about this one then? This is much better. Is it against the law for a minor to buy tickets to an R-rated movie? Or is that just something that movie theaters... Yeah. An adult has to accompany them if they're under 17. That's for the law? R, for R-rated. No, no. The, That's not so, a matter of the no. law. That's just movie theaters. For NC-17, no minor is uh, allowed even if an adult was there. But that's, is that like something that's against the law? No, that's just, it's just that's policy. Just, yes, it's just the policy of the, of the, okay. Yep. Yeah, I guess the point is treat adults like adults, like adults treat yeah. children like children. You don't need to treat adults like children. 100%. Yeah. And I, I really do think that if you, if you let the kids come up by these experiences naturally, it will actually help them it's process funny. them better. Yeah. It, it, it not only makes them, it helps them process them better. It also prepares them for unexpected things. Yes, that they're, exactly. that are, Oh, this is an unexpected thing. That is not the end of the world. You know, like dad didn't just drop dead of a heart attack. Yep. I just got scared on something that I saw, but it does condition you. Like we are human beings are anti-fragile. We need outside stimulus that is negative to be able to handle more uh more more resistance more net more bad things in your in your life if you do not get strong the point is or the the, the goal should not be to make the world flat the world the goal should be to make people strong enough to yeah. deal with the world as it is because the world is not going to change for you we've got 20 dollars from demo trigger warning a kansas city story oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your 10th super chat think, no think of it this way I'll, I'll give an example going the other uh, direction right think of like all the times when somebody will call a movie super woke and you go see it and it's not it's just bad Right. Mm -hmm. Think of that as like a reverse trigger warning. Like, like, uh, like why? Uh, so you let it ch like you let it color your opinion of this thing. And then you go see it. And you're like, I don't really see that in this. Like the best thing you can do is go into media unencumbered and putting that before a film saying like this movie was made at a time where the, you know, people spoke differently and people treated people differently. Sure. That like that might reaffirm that position, but wouldn't it be better for the kid to experience that movie, have to process the fact, when was this movie made? Oh, it was made in this year. Then they can either look into it or, God forbid, ask your parents if you're a kid and say, oh, is that how people spoke back then? And then you as the adult can do your job and have a conversation with your child about it rather than mm -hmm. expecting Disney to raise your children. They're also doing something that's... Uh not a trigger warning, but something similar where they're releasing a movie and then releasing a page around the movie that links you to a bunch of resources yeah. about the material. Like with Miller's Girl, they released this list of yeah. resources about like, I don't know, like it was like domestic violence yeah. organizations and all these other nonprofits. Um, TV shows when they used to do like every TV show would have like an episode about suicide and then at the end of the episode that they would have too. one of the stars of the show very seriously say if you know somebody who is considered committing suicide mm -hmm. uh, here are resources or information for you to they call. show the, the hotlines yep. for yes. things like that yep. That's I mean, all. we still do something like that a lot of times on, on the internet. You know, if, if someone dies or, or commits suicide, a lot of times you'll see those kind of tweets or whatever responses with, with the suicide prevention line and stuff like that on the, on the you know, on timelines and stuff. I agree with, with Fine Sue. says, I don't think that you should be prepared for these things. And when I was young, we never had trigger warnings for shows. Shakespeare's plays are full of murders, full of horror. Mm -hmm. As a young student and lover of theater, I never experienced trigger warnings telling me, by the way, in King Lear... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Was it Gloucester's? Yeah, yeah. He's going to have his uh, eyes pulled out. Yeah. We have twenty dollars from Stephen Van Dalen Wetters. Said, "World proof the child, don't child proof the world." There you Correct. Go. Good all point. Right. All right. Uh, so I agree with with all those points being made. All right. So I put a poll up today, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very important. It's a very question. important one. I need to know what do you believe Megan Fox is more closely akin to? <laughs> is she a Ukrainian blow up doll? <laughs> Or is she an expensive Japanese sex doll? Ukrainian blow-up doll. Okay. She feels very strongly about this. She does. Because in this selfie she took with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey and MGK at the Super Bowl after party, she did in fact resemble a Ukrainian blow-up doll. And she captioned the photo, 
guys, look how different I don't look at all. Turns out it was just a, sa a shadowy cell phone pic of me looking like a Ukrainian blow up doll, when in reality, I look like one of those super expensive silicone real sex dolls you can only get in Japan. God bless you, Megan. And she God thinks that's you. something to brag about. It is. I don't okay. know that it's something to brag about. It is a good retort. <laughs> I think that it's a good retort. So. She, I, she definitely looks different than usual, especially in that photo from the side with the pink lights. Yeah, the high, the high cheekbones, like the cheekbones being that high, and even with the, you know, she's it's doing it on a, it's the lip on injections with the, with the kissy face or the duck face or whatever. But like, yeah, she's someone who never needed to change her face no, at all. No, well, right now, know. Ukrainian blow up doll is in the lead with fifty nine percent. I agree. With we got that a assessment. twenty dollar one here from Jason Ho uh, Hoekstra. Says Mary is, a is as beautiful as ever. Brett looks great. Any chance I can get a rebel yell from the failed musician? No! Perfect. Thank you for that. That was perfect. Though. Thank You're you. Welcome. All right, uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. She she was pushing back on these people because people got very mad at her. So it says, you'd think Megan Fox is Vladimir Putin the way Ukrainians are coming for her. They're what? pissed off about a self-deprecating comment she made, but Megan thinks everyone just needs to lighten the hell up. She decided to respond to the torrent of social media comments about a pic of her MGK took on Sunday night with Tra Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Haters blew up with claims that she surgically altered her face, so she fired back from a different angle of the foursome, insisted that she doesn't look all that different. She quipped in her caption, turns out it was just a shadowy self and pick the quote that you said earlier, but they're pissed about this. Uh, so what did like they say? Like calling yourself a yeah. Ukrainian blow up doll is Somebody an insult says, to Ukrainians everywhere. Megan's joke didn't land with thousands of Ukrainians who left comments like WTF, I'm Ukrainian. Am I looking like a blow up doll? Okay, that wasn't the point. And another <laughs> says, I guess xenophobia towards Eastern Europeans is still a thing in Hollywood. Well, that one never went away, my friend. <laughs> Have you seen a movie with a bad guy that wasn't Russian in the last 20 years? I mean, come on. Do they know that blow-up dolls aren't people? No, they do not. <laughs> uh, and then it says, in Ukraine is being annihilated by war unprovoked. Please, can we focus on that? Wah, wah, wah. Hey, you out there doing your own thing in your own life, focus on me and what I'm talking about. <laughs> and why would you tell the most vapid person on the planet yeah. that? Uh, she, like, why can't you be like Angelina Jolie and come visit our <laughs> coffee shops? <laughs> that was so stupid. You mm -hmm. just reminded me of that. Oh, no. She, she responded, dear God, that is not what I meant. Ukrainian women are hot air as fuck. Uh, so I imagine the blow up dolls would also be hot. Let a girl make a joke for F's sake. Damn. Uh, Ma'am, this is the internet. Your ability to make a joke is removed as soon as you join. Right. Somebody yeah. without a sense of humor will come contact you shortly. Also, they're not allegations that she surgically altered her face. She definitely did surgically alter her face. She didn't deny that, though. So uh, it, She's someone who definitely never needed to get a nose job as yep. well. That is so extreme. Yep. There was nothing wrong with her face before. She looks like a totally different person. It's like she was trying to make herself look more Kardashian. I feel like that's like a lot of people are trying to like, I'm not saying that Kim Kardashian isn't like, she's she's very pretty, like especially when she's done up and stuff, but like it's almost like there's no personality in her face anymore because so many people are trying to go for right. that look. It doesn't look like anything other than like, almost like a fake pretty right, face, like, almost, you know? Megan Fox used to be way more attractive, not because aging has made her look different, but her surgeries and fillers made her look different. Yep. Those are the things that made her look older. If she never touched her face, she would look 10 times better. Probably. All right. So, you know, but, but also the, the point is, is that you can't make any jokes on the internet anymore. It's when you say, I love apples, and somebody says, oh, so you hate oranges then, huh? Next Do you thing, hate oranges? Zelensky is going to comment that he's really offended. I love it. Actually, what if Zelensky like hit her up in the in the inbox? He's like, he's Look. gonna slide into the DMs. Yeah, he's got that. <laughs> Adele's in trouble now as well. What'd you do? Get skinny They're, again? No, she's still skinny. They're mad because her ticket prices are so damn high. Oh, you mean she's made too much money? Yes. Uh, it says you'll need to be rolling in the deep to afford <laughs> <laughs> 984 euros for the best seat in the house during Pounds. her ten night residency in Germany. Uh, even What's the cheapest tickets for her. residency. Thank yep. you. Thank you. The, most, the cheapest tickets are 280. Look, a residency is a, is a limited engagement. Yeah. It's not like a tour where she's going out. She's doing those shows for 10. Like, it's probably a, a specific time. What's what kind of room is it? Like, is it a big room? Do you know? Uh, it's uh, it doesn't list the place. It's, a, place. it's an outdoor arena, I think. 
But it's like, if you think $1,000 is too much for the best seats, then try getting a ticket to a Taylor Swift concert. Yeah, Those are in the tens of thousands. They said her tickets at Madison Square Garden were cheaper. Okay. I mean, that's, that's possible. But again, this, it's like, you don't know what the, you don't know what the, 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 the logistics of the situation are like, I don't know what it co- like what the overhead is there in, in wherever it is, France or whatever. But like, and I get it. Like it, it is an expensive ticket, but it's not like Adele is, is like a, you know, like Taylor Swift playing for young people that don't have money. Like most people that are going to go see Adele, at least are adults, contempt, you know, contemporary adult music. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. it's not, it, to me, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound obnoxious for the best seats in the house well, they're, if, you they're... Can't, if you can't get in for less than 100 bucks that's kind of not did good you see but... the, did you, this is such an aside but you mentioned like middle you know, like they're like older middle class people who can afford tickets do you see like the tweet that car that uh sargon like retweeted earlier which one it's the it's um it's a scene from uh fight club and it just the caption just says wham my <laughs> My my secure job pays too well. I'm so miserable. Uh, why was Gen X like this? Was the their what? original tweet was about having a salary oh, that's yes. 100 my high paying middle class, my high paying job K. pays too well. It was it was the most annoying job. The most annoying uh, job pay rate or whatever is 150 to 200 thousand. No, this like wasn't that. No? that. This was that. That was that guy who said like uh, who said it's annoying because like you can afford to. Yeah, that, that you was You can different. afford to live comfortably but can't not have a job. Yeah, like, like you can you Why can would aff- you expect you can afford to not to have save. a job? Because what you can afford to save for retirement but you can't afford to invest in anything meaningfully. Which is ridiculous because the the point of investing is to save for retirement for the for the vast majority of people. Yeah. But if you ha- like he's literally saying I can't make enough to retire on in the next 5 to 10 years. Yeah. You, you if he worked 15 years, 20 years, you definitely can make Plenty of money to retire on. And 20 years is not really like a whole career. A lot of people work longer than 20 years at a, I don't know about nowadays, but it used to be people. It's this one. It says, ah, help. My job is too stable and high paying. I'm going insane. Was Gen X really like this? Look, this was a different time, right? And we talk a lot about this with movies like Wanted, uh, uh, this movie, um, even think like American Beauty earlier, like people were bored of the middle class lifestyle that they were fed. At least Hollywood was bored of it and wanted to deconstruct what it meant to live in American suburbia, right? Mm-hmm. So that was like a whole theme of this period of time between the late 90s to the mid 2000s when the housing crisis hit, hit and then suddenly it seemed like heaven rather than hell. But you just don't understand it. And I like his sentence. Uh, it says, you will only understand the spiritual emptiness of the last man at the end of history when you have lived it. We've got $20 from Hefland. He said, I made Phil Labonte sing Big Iron by Marty Robbins. I sent him the song on X. I'm that dude that made Taylor Swift singing Sober <laughs> and Oh, anemia. you had to do an anemia. Cool. I'm talking, or no, I'm taking mm. requests to make popular YouTubers sing just about anything. <laughs> there you go. So he made AI you? I didn't see it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll, we'll see that later. The, but the point is, like, somebody said, like, Gen X probably should have stuck with religion, and that's why they were all so empty inside. Mm. Like, you've got a good job, you're stable, but you don't have anything bigger than you, therefore they're all miserable. Well, they had children. Is family not enough? Apparently not. The real issue here is that if you go to an Adele concert, she's going to tell you about her therapy session. Yes, that's the worst part. Instead of singing. She's like, oh my gosh, it's so hard to be skinny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, bad news for everyone. Kathy Griffin says, if you enjoy Valentine's Day, F you. Yes. Yes. So I didn't even know she was married in the first place. But she not. says she's getting a divorce. F Valentine's Day and F all of you. <laughs> I, I wrote a song that... Uh, that Kathy should listen to. It's called F Love. Perfect. I really did. <laughs> so she says, she says, I'm getting divorced. F Valentine's Day and F all of you. Did I say that? Thank God I have three shows this weekend. I'm going to make every member of the audience my personal Valentine, regardless of sexual oh, orientation. She, she did get married. She uh, filed for divorce from her husband, Randy Bick, in December. When did they get I didn't a... even know she was married in the first place. <clears throat> But she was a spinster for the longest time. Yeah. Alone in that mansion. Now she can do like a, a magazine cover of like a fake version of her husband's head. Oh, on yeah. The cover. <laughs> I wonder that. what he did wrong. It was definitely his fault, I'm sure. She's begging fans to buy tickets to her comedy tour, saying yeah. they're not selling well. Yeah, they're not doing too well. <laughs> she, uh, 
hinted that her tour would include jokes about Donald Trump. Oh Ooh. my gosh, that is so groundbreaking. I tell you what, I am really surprised that she decided to go with such an irreverent set list. Oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> funny. Where do you my. get your ideas? How Good does Lord. she do it? How do you How do, does do she it? Do it? So fresh and original. All right. Uh, do, do we don't, I don't think we have a cringe. We don't have a cringe today. I guess that could be. That could friend. be cringe. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll go ahead and do cute of the day. There's not enough cringe out there right now. Uh, I didn't, We're in I, a cringe I should, I should have looked more. We still have the one from yesterday, but uh, let's go to cute of the day then. Here we go. First things first. This is from Underminer on Twitter. It says, uh, this is, he didn't give a caption or anything, but it's just a squirrel. Is it your pet squirrel? It must be a pet squirrel. Let's do two more. <laughs> This one here, this is what? from Devin, says, uh, how, uh, this is my pet orb weaver, Steve. He was my guard spider and lived by my door. Does this count as cute of the day? No, well, that's If you disgusting. find it cute, then sure. I tell you what, I am a bit of a fan of the little jumping spiders. I think they're cute, the little ones that dance and jump around. You don't know? Well, we just watched a whole movie yesterday where a lady got murdered for, you know, going to look up spiders in the Amazon, so... Yeah, I can't. I can't do anything with spiders right now. Yeah. Not right now. No. Later. Let's do one more. I haven't Tomorrow? processed that movie yet. All right. This is from Every Man I Can, and his ad is "Vax the Rich." <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, he says this is Panther and Ginger. Aw, that's cute. All right. Kind of looks like a two-headed cat at first. A little bit. <laughs> All right, Mary, why don't you tell everyone what the hell yeah. is going on with these magazine covers today? Yeah, well, we talked what, about okay. this yesterday, but Kristen Stewart was recently on the cover of Rolling Stone. And it seems like a trend now that artistic directors for these photo shoots are trying to make celebrities look as ugly as possible, specifically trying to make women look more masculine and make men look more feminized. And I just posted a tweet with that cover of Kristen Stewart and then another cover of Killian Murphy on GQ where he uh, looked like a lesbian wine ant. And I captioned it, masculinize the feminine, feminize the masculine. That's all I said to direct the ire of every they them on Twitter instantly. They are so mad at me. <laughs> and I got replies like, I know you're just rage farming, but at some point it has to be exhausting to be so incredibly fragile. Uh, another one said, Kristen is hot. Killian is just too old to be dressing like that. <laughs> Um, and another one said, Gen Z right wingers are going to lose their minds when they find out about rock and roll. <laughs> they, like they just so desperately want the left to still be cool. And it's not. And imagine, and they imagine you didn't know who David Bowie was. They're sending me photos and videos of Prince, of David Bowie, of board, Boy George, of like glam rock. And I'm like, yeah, it was also cringe when they did it too. But at least they were being original. Here's uh, the photos that we're talking about, of course. Um, yes, this is Kristen Stewart on the cover and grabbing yes, her jock movie. strap. It's, it's just so gross. The, and I've said this before on the, on the show. I'm so entirely over ugly as an aesthetic. I'm so entirely over postmodern deconstruction of beauty. It's all been done. It's tired. This is not the first unattractive looking person that we've seen on the cover of a magazine. It's just exhausting. It's every, we've done androgyny. It's just done. It's so done. Everything, all of this stuff is done. Yeah, and I think for at least the individuals, there's something deeper at play. Like Kristen Stewart or the actor formerly known as Ellen Page. These are naturally gorgeous women who are doing everything in their power to make themselves look ugly and look masculine because they don't want to look appealing to men. And that's a deeper issue within yourself that you need to resolve. I don't think that that should be celebrated. And one of the quotes from Kristen Stewart in this interview is, I want to do the gayest effing thing you've ever seen in your life. If I could grow a little mustache, if I could grow an effing happy trail and unbutton my pants, I would. It's just why? It's just try hard. Why do you want to be a man so badly? <laughs> like, why is it that? Why is it that that like being a woman is not good in your? What's opinion? funny is like they imagine that if they could become men, they would still be. They, they don't realize that they wouldn't be treated with the special with the speciality. That you look at that women. trans man that yeah. that trans man that was bawling his eyes out because oh man, being a man means you get treated like a man. Guess what? 
Just because women think that every man that's ever wronged them is their dad or the president doesn't mean that every man is your dad or the president. Feminists act like every man in the world is this ultimate power when most men throughout history have been the garbage man and gotten walked on and broken their bodies trying to, to support their family and their, their, ki their wife and their kids. The idea that every man is this powerful thing that, that has 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 been in positions to oppress all women forever it's ridiculous people are people they're not caricatures yep. mm -hmm. it's like this is a question that none of these people have ever asked themselves in their lives like why do i want to be a man so bad i mean yeah. <laughs> there's no introspection it's just getting celebrated and obviously if you are a woman and you're doing everything in your power to counteract your nature especially as a woman who is naturally as beautiful as kristen stewart is there's something wrong in your in your brain or, or in your emotions that you need to resolve. It's not for us to to resolve for you. And uh, I wanted to read this other reply. These people are always going on about how trans people are actually homophobic and promoting gender roles based on stereotypes. Yet every time they see somebody who identifies with their birth sex doing a little gender bending, they lose their minds. How do you feel about that? Are we hypocritical? Because mm. mm. they're saying this is the same thing as being a tomboy. It's not the same thing as being <laughs> a tomboy. I think that's really yeah. intellectually dishonest. Very dishonest. Yeah. Uh, this is not the same thing as a girl who's growing up and hasn't learned what it is to be feminine yet I and mean, is you know playing also... baseball or whatever. Like that's not the same thing as a grown woman saying that she wishes she could grow a mustache. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, a big part of this is also like I don't find the actual act itself to be as interesting as I do find the media's desire to want to perpetuate it onto society. Uh, on one hand, you could say that perhaps the, they just see it as a human interest piece. Uh, look at this celebrity with a large profile who has this unique way of looking at the world. Or they, they would phrase it as unique, right? Obviously, we know that these things are becoming far more common these days. But you wonder why. And, and we see a lot of it. I mean, we just looked at Megan Fox, who has turned herself into into a hyper feminine uh, idea of uh, you know what it means to be a woman right so it's almost like the worst part is like they've they've destroyed the middle like you have to be either a caricature of uh, of an extremely feminine woman or you have to go the complete opposite way and destroy all of your femininity why not look for somebody who radiates the beauty of natural femininity right in the middle that you have seems to be like something worth celebrating either butch yeah. or a sex doll yeah um, and obviously both of those options are unappealing to the vast majority of women. But also, but also for, for magazines and for these things, look, look, shock sells. It does. For the most part, shock sells. I don't know if this is selling magazines. I'm just saying that people find the, the circus freaks of, of society more interesting than people right in the middle. You want to succeed I think on... The, but I think the problem in regards to your shock thing, I think the problem is it's hard to shock people mm -hmm. anymore. Or at least the way that you're allowed to shock people. I'm just saying that like they're, they're not going to put just a, a lady on the cover in a floor length dress making cookies on Rolling Stone. It's just not going to happen. And look, this is echoed in all forms of this content too. Like if you want to survive, if you want to make content on YouTube a lot of the time, if you want to be popular on Twitter or any of these things, you're not going to get there by, by displaying super nuanced and uh, opinions. You're going to get there by being hyperbolic over the top mm -hmm. and and playing to the like to the outskirts that's how I'm you not get sure because I don't think that celebrities gender bending is shocking anymore not at maybe all maybe you could say it was shocking when someone like David Bowie wore makeup but that was decades They're ago 20 years behind we're, the times and we know that we're way past the point when a man wearing a dress is shocking. But I'm saying they're 20 years, they don't, re just like they don't realize that they're the establishment now, they don't realize that modern society doesn't, isn't shocked by this. So they think they're, they, how often do they talk about how they're breaking down barriers every time they let a woman put a superhero costume on, as <laughs> if that hasn't been going on for 20 years. That is mm -hmm. kind of funny. Like, they don't I, get it. That's the, like the, the whole like, oh, we're breaking down barriers and it's, it's literally stuff that's been broken down like literally in the 80s or in the 70s exactly and, which i also which is part of, as a social I conservative saying, you know? i object to that anyway but i wasn't Fair alive enough. then i'm just pointing it out now yeah. because this is the newest example of it and i think especially when it comes to the men in hollywood who who feminize themselves it presents itself as an opportunity for self-promotion 
like Ezra Miller, for instance. I definitely think Ezra Miller got more opportunities in the entertainment industry because he was starting to present himself as androgynous because, because that's sellable edgy again. and that's marketable. And then Harry Styles wore a floor length gown on the cover of Vogue back in, I believe, 2020. And this and, is the more nefarious desire to just destroy masculinity as a yeah. whole. There's a there's a really interesting article when Camille Nanjiani mentioned that it wasn't it was no longer about toxic masculinity. It was about traditional masculinity. They don't yeah. even it's they're not even like they're not even keeping the mask on anymore. They don't even care about toxic masculinity. They want to get rid of any form of masculinity. Well, men are bad. Men I mean, are that's bad. That's the long and short of it, yes. honestly. You know, so. Yeah. yeah, I think the goal isn't really gender bending. It's abolishing gender altogether. Yeah. Until everyone just becomes an androgynous yeah. blob. Well, so th I don't want to get too in too in depth on, on this because there's a buddy of mine made a video about that's coming out pretty soon. He talks about Rat Utopia, and if you are familiar with that with Rat Utopia, yes. then you know. But that 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 really is because we're super comfortable. Significant parallels, and it'll be out. I think next week. It's his uh, his YouTube page is What If Alt Hist. Um, he's a gr it's at What If Alt Hist H I S T like history. Um, Give him a follow. He's, he puts out great videos. Um, and it's, you def definitely want to keep an eye out for the Rat Utopia video, which is coming. It's great. And oh. once you once you hear it and hear the parallels, hear what happens to the rats in Rat Utopia and the parallels to our society now, it is striking. And seeing as rat, like mammals, we were kind of, mammals are all kind of built the same, right? Like, so even though, even though like, your mammals look different and stuff. We're kind of all, you know, we all got boobs and nipples and most of us got four arms or two arms and two legs and, and stuff like that. So they're very similar. And our brains are similar as well. There's the, the, the mammal or the, the uh, reptile brain and the mammal brain on top. Humans have the cortex, but the, the mammal brain is still there. So like all the feelings that and emotions and stuff that we feel uh, like mammals also share, they're all, they're very similar. So, so when you see the conditions in the rat utopia and look at the behavior of humans, it's striking and it's frightening. And I know that was a big diatribe, but you got to check it out. The rat utopia living in a society that's as comfortable as the one we live in right now. Sure. You're never going to own a home, but you're never at risk. You can go to the grocery store you and you can find the ingredients you need. God forbid it's 2020 and you can't find toilet paper anywhere mm. when there is no actual struggle to put yourself through physical struggle on a daily basis you will look for ways to make your life uh more of a challenge or to set yourself apart that way and that seems to be what's happening <laughs> well here. for someone like harry styles yeah. he gets to wear the dress on the cover of vogue for them it's even worse for there's them, a backlash it's financially, it's so financially beneficial he he gets to frame himself as somebody who is marginalized now yeah. and then when he accepts the grammy for best album of the year he says to the crowd yeah. this doesn't happen to people like me very oh often Give me a break. people like me men who paint their nails and wear dresses and act like little girls yeah. there's a we missed a 20 dollars one here from philip reed uh, Sorry about that. Says brought us uh, bought a seventy nine Lincoln Mark V. It waited and uh, it waited until I registered it to start looking harder than a desperate Jehovah's Witness yippee. <laughs> Knocking harder. Is that what it said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What did I say? Looking. Looking. Oh. Ooh. That's bad. Um, yeah, I, I think for a lot of this is also, it's worse for the celebrities because for the, what the kids are doing, it's more enshrined in like what they're actually, what their lives are like. A lot of kids are confused. They're trying to make sense of what their life is supposed to be. So they experiment with different identities socially. For celebrities, it's financially beneficial. Mm -hmm. It gets them work. That's but then, worse. You know, there are other celebrities that don't engage in this behavior and it yeah. doesn't seem like they are at a disadvantage they need, for it. They don't need to. But if your talent, like yeah, if your talent and your work speaks for itself, you don't need to rely on a cheap trick like that. Exactly. To get also, clicks. I don't, I don't really hold this against Killian Murphy because he's kind of always been this way and he's really, really talented. Well, so, so is Kristen Stewart um, pretty much. But, but throughout her whole twenties, basically. Is, what is Kristen Stewart doing these days? Was, what was the last thing? Lesbian she was in? powerlifting movies. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go. What an amazing career! Yes, let's go <laughs> super chats. Power. Uh, well, she also made this statement about female. Oh ladies. yes, hold on, go ahead. Do you want to get into that yeah, or ahead. save it for yeah. another day? Go ahead. Well, she recently did an interview with uh, Variety where she said that the concept of female strong female characters is a misguided one. She says the industry has a misguided interest in movies with strong female leads 
and she wants her new film to deconstruct that archetype. Quote, what does that mean? It's BS. It means that we're not actually letting women define themselves. It's the assumption that we need to be empowered by the people deciding who gets to have a perspective, that we have to provide something aspirational. It's the lowest hanging fruit there is. I think it's simpler than that. I think that they, what she doesn't understand is the average Hollywood writer doesn't know how to write a complex female character story in a way that's actually going to move the needle as far as ticket prices go. And what sells is box office popcorn flicks, which used to be run by men doing masculine things. And the only way they know to ram home the idea of female empowerment is to turn the men in, turn the women into men. Well, this is also coming from a person who was in the Charlie's Angels 2019 yes. reboot. So, the hypocrisy. Rich yeah. coming from you, Kristen Stewart. Yeah. But I remember when she was in an interview for Snow White and the Huntsman, she talked about strong female leads. And it was compared a lot with what Rachel Zegler was saying about the rewritten Snow White. Because she said, it's interesting to see this character who is very soft and very innocent and very feminine interact with a world around her that is very brutal and gruesome and violent mm -hmm. and still keep her innocence and her softness toward the end of the film. It was one of the reasons I liked Argyle so much in the beginning was the way they incorporated the character of Ellie yeah. as the spy world unfurls around her was fantastic. And then they had to turn her into the strong female character and I immediately found it less interesting. Yeah, so I, I think that she's right, but it's coming from the wrong person. And I mean, she really kind of in her real life is trying to embody a strong female character. Yeah. All right, let's go to Super Chats. Andrew Jacobs said it fills the guest F Destiny worse than Emma. <laughs> who, who's Emma? Emma Vigland, who was uh, on IRL. She was distinctly uh, combative. So. Didn't know where the okay. skate park was. Yeah, didn't know where the skate park was. Didn't know. Shane H. Wilder said, Happy Thursday, Brett, Mary, and Commander Phil. Brett and Mary, did y'all remember to take a dose of Dramamine before seeing Madam Web? Oh, it, dude, it could have helped me. So here's the thing, guys. Some art nerd decided that the aesthetic they should use for this film was to do a bunch of 180 camera tilts. Uh, because Spider-Man hangs upside down and Zeke hangs upside down, so the camera will start upside down and flip right side up. The problem is they had a bunch of losers who didn't know what they were doing, uh, interpret it, and then like cut it together with like smash cuts of scenes moving one direction, and it doesn't work. It didn't work at all. There's no tone of urgency anywhere in the movie, and Dakota Johnson talks as if she is constantly on a Xanax drip in her arm. Like, yeah. I aspire to be as chill as she sounds while an ambulance siren is, siren is blaring and she's driving somebody dying to a hospital. Also, I failed to mention this when we were recording our review earlier, but um, I should have mentioned how utterly ridiculous that last scene was where Cassie is in her electric yep. wheelchair with sunglasses on, acting like a totally different person. And like... Just the, the whirring sound of her electric scooter while we're supposed to be watching this with swelling music. It's like this really serious moment. Also, I couldn't stop laughing. If you want to understand what real acting is, there's a scene where she, like, we mentioned it in our review, where she has to read out loud to herself a diary and her voice reading to herself in a room is exactly the same voice she uses to talk to other people. So yeah. she doesn't she doesn't talk as if it's under her breath. She doesn't inflect in a certain way that actually looks like she's reading. It looks like there's nothing on the page and she's just memorized the lines. How you read off of a piece of paper is vastly different than how you sound if you're actually just speaking into the ether. Yeah. That's actual acting. She couldn't do that. Shane H. Wilder said the left lane is for crime and green rooms are not private dressing rooms. My the name is Shane H. Wilder and I approve this message. The next time he comes, somebody should make a sign that says like for the, the bathroom in the green room and say Destiny's dressing room. <laughs> yeah. Well, now he's never going to come back. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have beef with Tim. Tim him and, he gets along with Tim. Yep. He just yeah. makes sure that you don't cross paths then. I mean... I don't care if he comes here. <laughs> T-Dog said, thoughts on smoking weed. How bad is it for health? Uh, look, I mean, I'm not the guy that's going to be like, uh, you know, you should definitely smoke weed. But I'm also like, 
not the guy that's like, oh, weed's going to like ruin your life. So, I mean, you should probably moderate. You should probably make sure that you're not, you know, screwing up your life. But really, my opinion on substances is what are they doing to, the, to your life and how are you using them? Because most substances, if you're not, if they're not destroying your life and you're not, you know, you're using them rec rec recreationally and it's not ruining re your relationships or ruining your work or ruining your body, I personally would be like, oh, it's not a problem. But a lot of people can't do that with a lot of substances. So that's me. I can't. Hi. I know people that can just smoke a little bit, like have a cigarette once in a while. I wish I was them. Brett's literally anti-hero. No, no, okay, no, but what I'll, what I'll say is, is like, to do that, it requires an incredible amount of like consistent self-reflection mm. to be like- Which most people don't have. Which no. most people don't have. So it's like, <laughs> you have to ask yourself all the time, is this affecting my work? Have I, it is like, for instance, like say you're, you're doing a lot of stuff. It's like, when you get up for work, is it getting harder to wake up in the morning? Like, did you used to wake up with a little spring in your step and now you're like, you're kind of dragging yourself out of bed? Like, you have to constantly keep an eye on yourself to be able to realize, to understand whether the moderation is actually working for you. But mm -hmm. the, I'm not a doctor nor a financial advisor, so I give no advice. Yeah, I think that Dr. Drew has a lot of valuable insight on this. I don't know why, but I listened to a podcast where he was talking about weed and whether weed addiction is real. It's really interesting. Pat the Plumber said, do one, yeah, do one more. third chair is for crime. There you go. Well, third chair is for crime. Because <laughs> Phil is in it, of course. I mean, I am, uh, I am uh, less, than, less than respectful of the law at times. Perfect. All right, let's talk about Lana. Yeah, I want to voice a new call to action for the political right. Reject Taylor Swift and embrace Lana Del Rey. Yes. Everyone has heard the meme. Well, no. Reject modernity embrace tradition phil is a swifty and a lana fan yeah, so both. you you say both and yeah I'm, there's I'm, no conflict yeah. between those yeah listen you don't have to pick one you can love them both you don't have to decide you like chocolate better than peanut butter and you don't have to like peanut better than chocolate you can have <laughs> your chocolate and peanut butter together or as I called her last week in a thumbnail, Lana Del Day. Um, <laughs> That's not the worst. Part, called out. The worst part being somebody corrected me in the chat while making fun of what we were saying, and then I, it took me an additional three minutes to like see the spelling error that I had. Mm. Where I was, I was like, I was like, I screenshotted it. I'm sending it to Mary. I'm like, look at this idiot. I didn't spell it right. Um, yeah. Yep. I spelled it Lana Del Day. It smacked you right in the face. Got we're me. just gonna start making all of them like that. Twenty dollars super chat here from four twenty funny. <laughs> and uh, Phil was going through some boxes and found some old CDs I'd listened to Ooh. on repeat in Iraq, two thousand five. Behind silence and solitude Whoa. and this darkened heart. Thanks for making good Cheers, music that man. has stuck with me for so long. Thank you so much. Did you know next month, March, is twenty years? since the release of This Darkened Heart. And it's also 20 years since my first appearance on MTV. There you go. Whoa. Also, <laughs> I wonder what 420 20 years is a long twice. time. It's not really that long. Well, I, once you've lived through yeah, it, it doesn't once, feel like it was Once you that get long. to my age, it's yeah. not that long. So this tweet, reject Taylor Swift's bland as hell pop liberal Ooh. Miss Americana and embrace Lana Del Rey's vision of a dark, gritty, rusted, toothed, and moss-skinned American empire. I'm with you on the second half. With you on the second half. You have to admit Lana has way more depth than Taylor Swift. Uh, just well, I mean, it's... it's lyrically a, speaking. So, first of all, I disagree about the lyrics. I think I think Taylor Swift is absolutely stellar at her at being a lyricist because of what she's trying to do. Thank you. The crisis party disagrees with you. Because she's because the style that she's going for, what she's trying to do, it may, it, people can have opinions on what they prefer as opposed to it, and that's great. And I'm not saying that that there's someone that, or I'm not saying that someone's opinion or preference is wrong or whatever. But she, but to say that Lana Del Rey is better than Taylor Swift, I disagree strongly. I think that okay. Lana De Del Rey is very different. And I, but I again, I'm not the guy that's going to be dogging on either of them. I think they're both great. But we also can't deny that Taylor Swift drew a lot of influence from Lana Del Rey and. In her more recent albums that get a lot of praise and I think she doesn't get enough credit for that. Mm -hmm. This op-ed pointed out that Lana Del Rey and Taylor Swift are both obviously politically liberal. Lana even said that she was participating in a hex on Donald Trump back in like 2018 or something. 
Um, but it seems like Lana, maybe, you know, you could say it's subjective if she has better songs, right? But I think objectively, Lana is more generous in spirit. Um, she seems like she's more friendly to middle America. She doesn't have disdain for people who disagree with her politically. Um, and in, in one of her comments about the J6 events, this was really interesting. Lana said, I think for the people who stormed the Capitol, it's disassociated rage. They want to wild out somewhere. And it's like, we don't know how to find a way to be wild in our world. If I go to the Brentwood County Mart and barefoot or whatever, I'm not insane. I'm connected to the earth. I think people are having to reevaluate what's strange and not strange. Like watching the people storm the Capitol, everyone gets to go look at that and figure out what capitals they've been storming this year <laughs> in their own freaking lives. I love the I love the intellectualization of that. That is like But it's true. Whatever reporter asks that question is like you did not need to to do that. You did not need to hit They that got so out hard. of their depth yeah. when she answered that way. And I think that it's she a really good point that. <laughs> that a lot of people didn't recognize how much of the so-called insurrection was sort of a an outlet for catharsis for people who are rightly frustrated with the direction of politics. But that's a whole different discussion. She just seems a lot more even keeled and less snarky mm -hmm. than Taylor Swift is. Like they pointed out in you need to calm down in taylor swift's you know pro gay song mm. she just is saying you know the people who disagree with me they don't have any valid reasons to disagree with lgbt movements they have no inner lives they are they don't have thoughts they think this way because they're hateful no further analysis is required and for someone like lana i think she actually appreciates that you know people in middle America or in the South are not subhuman and they actually are the draws for a lot of her inspiration in her music. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of that sentiment that comes from the fans of, of Taylor Swift, again, that's not Taylor Swift's fault. You can't choose your fans. No. That will never be their fault. I think, But what I'm saying is that like they've just never traveled to these places. They've never actually interacted with somebody from middle America, You know, somebody who didn't live in a large urban center. Right. So unless you've actually experienced people from another culture and it, they really are very vastly different cultures, uh, it's very easy to stigmatize and demonize that. But at least like Taylor Swift sells herself as this former small town, humble, yeah. grounded person coming from country music roots and Tennessee. This is uh, Lana's picture that everyone's upset about, by the way. The yeah, the uh, the internet freaks out over an image of Lana Del Rey holding a gun uh, in a mirror that. selfie. Not the greatest trigger that. discipline I've ever seen, but you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that it's the greatest trigger discipline. Uh, <laughs> I still want, I would still like, uh, she could be my girlfriend. There was also a video of her that went viral of her at a shooting range. Yeah, she was at Terran Tactical. Terran Tactical, Let's yeah. take a look at that. This is great. Which is not even, she's not shooting. No, it's She's got not. a gun, but still. Stand by. <laughs> He's so I'm good. I'm not going to lie. The first time I saw this, I didn't even realize it was her. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah. Yeah. And someone quote tweeted and said, this isn't just any Somebody shooting range. Yeah. It's Terran Tactical in SoCal where all the closet conservative celebrities go to shoot guns under the guise of preparing for a movie or music video. Most but really, they just don't want to get canceled. Open secret in L L.A. Keanu buys his custom John Wick ARs from here, for yeah. example. Don't let Swiftian normality distract you from the real prize. Mm. Esoteric Lamaism. Yeah, look, if... if Everyone is, well, not everyone, but there's a lot of people that are familiar with the video of Keanu just shredding yeah. at Terran Tactical. And it's awesome. You mm -hmm. should go look at, just Google Keanu Terran Tactical. I had it's no totally idea that the, the, that the combat master that he uses is based off an M&P. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's really funny. I went, uh, I went back down the rabbit hole after that. There, I mean, an AR, because, of, yeah. because the AR rifle is, is it's open source now. Like you yeah. are not, I forget, not open source. Um, you don't need to you anyone can make one you, yeah. the pattern is is out in public and anyone can make one and so because of that they're basically all the same which is really really good for uh for the the private market because you can buy parts from anybody and they work um 
But that means that there's a ton of people that have been making the same rifle for a lot of years and a lot of companies make really good rifles that you can rely on. If you get an AR-15 and you spend upwards of seven, $800 for it, it's probably a quality rifle. My hope is this summer to actually get out and shoot way more. And there is a long range yeah. ri uh, rifle range in Martinsburg that I'm going to become a member. Uh, I was talking to Tyler about going last. I talked to him last night. We're going to go probably next weekend. So. Yeah. Uh, I was just I was looking into just getting like ownership out here yeah. in Maryland. Is oh just, yeah, yeah. It's you can keep it in my apartment in in Martinsburg. Yeah. Like it's uh, it was kind of a it was kind of crazy the amount of steps that had to be gone through to do that, and I didn't transport anything that I had from from Minnesota. And also, all the gun shops around here have l notoriously lazy hours. It's hilarious. Yeah. It's well, I mean, <laughs> why, you, um, why bother have being well, open when you can't most, sell guns? Exactly. <laughs> most of them are like like the the most of them were like appointment only. Yeah. Or yeah. Phil, yeah. have you been to Terran Tactical? I've not been to Terrence, no. I haven't been to this place. Okay, because nice. I don't know if this person, it, like, actually knows that this is an open secret in L.A. Like, closet conservative celebrities are going here yeah. to shoot guns really, for fun. Well, no, if they, if they really wanted to shoot them for fun and not get in trouble, they just wouldn't post videos at all. So what it is, right. is it allows them to do it and post yeah. the videos without getting in trouble. A wink, yeah. wink, nudge, nudge. Because there's, the I mean, another thing is, if you're in California, like, there's a lot of desert out there. So people that don't, like, if they want to go shoot, they just go out in the desert somewhere. And you can uh, go shoot, you, you know. That's fine, uh, if I understand correctly. Demo for $20 says, people showing off AR platforms that shot uh, is increasingly comical. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? It means that it, when you are producing, if you go to SHOT Show, which is the industry trade show, and you bring an AR, when, and you're like, oh, look, check out our new AR. It's like, okay, there are literally, every company here is making an AR. Why should I care about yours? You know? Okay. And the people that have, like, really quality long histories like everyone knows who they are so you have to come up with a real good reason for people to be like i'm going to pay attention to you otherwise it's just another ar okay um they also pointed out that lana used to date a cop and this was even in 2020 which is really daring of right? her she used to be with sean larkin who was also on live pd and oh, she yeah. said they hung out with law enforcement friends and their spouses in tulsa for a liberal millionaire pop star to enjoy such unglamorous company of grizzled cops in the country's second reddest state suggests a certain generosity of spirit. And she also last year covered Take Me Home Country Roads. Even the conversation around her just seems to have more of an aesthetic and right. <laughs> meaning. I don't know. And she, I'm telling you, she's the tortured poet and Taylor yes. is, is skinwalking as a tortured poet and it pisses me off. Yeah. Um, I think that Lana would probably have more Republicans in her fan base if you looked into it. I also saw this article, the right wing Straussianism of Lana Del Rey. The right wing Straussianism <laughs> of Lana Del Rey. This level of political philosophy around a pop star is a commentary on our society well, yeah, on its no, own. It's a commentary on the fact that you're going to send your kids to college for four years and spend a mortgage's worth of money to have them write something like this and expect themselves to be able to pay back those loans. Evil Me sent $20. Drove through your old stomping ground last night in the mini blizzard, Brett. I swear every time, every single time, Woodbury folks are idiots when they get on I-94. Change my mind. Phil would have been proud. Left lane crime. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like, so 94 will take you, west will take you into St. Paul and then into Minneapolis. If you go east, you, you end up, unfortunately, in Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> end up in Hudson, Wisconsin. Yeah, and Minnesota is, like many states, very famous for its horrible mergers. Nobody knows how to merge in the state of Minnesota. God forbid, get up to speed by the time you get to the end of the ramp. I have a thought about the way most people drive. Most people think that there are, like, four rules to driving, right? Like, they know that you have to accelerate, go forward. Like, you can't drive backwards. You have to go forward. They know that the... the, the uh, the signal is to tell people where to go, and they know what a stop sign means. Yeah. A lot yield, they don't know what that means. They don't know how a rotary works. Gives them no a idea. yellow blinking versus a red blinking. No idea, yep. completely lost, no clue at all. 
Like they don't understand what colored different colored arrows mean in lights. I, no I, I bet you a lot of people don't like don't understand the difference between red or I'm sorry between yellow broken lines and mm -hmm. white broken lines. Yeah. They the the yeah. only thing they know Wait, they understand the, the stop sign, they understand the green light, and they understand the accelerator, and they understand the brake. That's it. Everything else is just they're it's completely no idea what they're doing. I that flew over my head about the the white versus yellow lines. White. Case in point. Okay, so oops. White, you're going to be, yeah, it's white going the same way, yellow going opposite ways. Yeah. I'm a Capri Sun. Yeah. I don't know. But <laughs> the the best point here is that Lana Del Rey isn't a girl boss. She doesn't play into being a feminist girl boss, even though she probably would call herself not not a feminist, as she notoriously said. Um, it, she's she's not writing songs about her feminist grievances. She is writing The way that songs. Taylor Swift does. Yeah, she's writing songs about dudes. I and how just... slavishly devoted she is to that. Yeah, and how as, much she likes it. Dude. As undignified as that may be. It may be <laughs> undignified, but it's sexy as hell. And there, it, like, there's a total vibe. And it's honest, it. Yeah, it is, is honest. the thing. Yeah. I, I, when I hear songs that are gr too girl bossy, I just feel like you're not only lying to me, you're lying to yourself. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go to Super Chats. Because they all... Yep. You, it's, I saw this meme one time where it's like this this girl, this woman's <laughs> like, when he yells at me, frowny... My, uh, when he yells at me, my head frowny face, my pussy smiley face. Like, and that's like, okay, so we have to take you seriously too? Okay, yeah. awesome. <laughs> We're gonna go to Super Chats on that note. Shane H. Wilder said, the PCC porta potty makes sense. Culture is full of shit now anyway. Hmm. <sighs> Pat the Plumber said, what did Candace Owens do to Taylor? The Taylor Swift? Which Taylor? I know she doesn't like Taylor Swift. She called her like uh, one of the most unhinged feminists of our day or something. Oh, good Lord. Come on. Would you say that Can't. is uh, too harsh? That, well, it's, it's, it's detached from, it doesn't map onto reality. I mean, unhinged she's not even, very... she's not even remotely. Or one of the most toxic, I think. Is what not even said. remotely. Like when you think of actual feminist activist, those are the people that are annoying and blah, blah, blah. Taylor Swift, whereas she's, uh, she's like touches on abortion. And that's her, and she touches on LGBT issues, like, you know, don't be mean to gay people. That's about the, the extent of her, like, feminism stuff. Uh, like, she's singing about guys all the time. That's anti-feminism. Mm. Feminism rejects normal uh, relationships. It does. Well, she does have some, some girl boss songs, she, it, for sure. It's fair, enough, it's fair to say that she has girl boss songs, and it's fair to say that she touches on those issues. But to say that she is, like, the personification yeah. of these things, like, or to imply that she's an activist, is exaggerating to the point where it's, it is more accurate to say that Candace is wrong about Taylor than it is to say that Candace is right about Taylor because of how much Candace exaggerated. If she was more <laughs> honest about it and less exaggerating, you could say, okay, Candace is more right about Taylor than, you know, than she's wrong about Taylor. But because of the exaggeration, it's like, all right, well, there's way more people that are way more activist-y. Let's mm -hmm. do two more. Serenko Production said, Lana Del Rey just released a new cover of Blue Skies by Irving Berlin for her newest country album, I think. I'm so excited for Lasso. There you go. I didn't even realize that she was doing country albums, which is Yeah, she great. is. Uh, in the same year when Beyonce is supposed to be putting out her country album. So that's going to be contentious. It's you know, not all, like, country. In 2000, it's not. 2017, All That Remains released a, uh, a country cover, and we kind of made it a little bit metal, and now it's like, now the, the we're ahead of our time. Yeah. You're ahead, ahead of the of trends. Our, ahead of the trends. Mm -hmm. Damn it. One more. Shane H. Wilder said, I used to work with the singing weatherman. Let's He's go. pretty cool, IRL. There you, there you go. All right. That's funny. All right. Let's hold off on the rest. Mary, what's going on with Leia Armenia? Again, is Tom Cruise really chasing her down? <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's Tom Cruise specifically, but Leia Ramini recently wrote a post on X going into detail about how she is still being stalked and harassed to this day since she escaped the Church of Scientology all the way back in 2013. Yeah. This has been going on for over a decade. And I think the saddest part about this is that Leia Ramini was brought into the Church of Scientology kind of against her will when her parents converted. She was only nine years old when she became a member and because she left as an adult when she knew better, she's still facing the consequences of it. And I think people might underestimate the level of influence that certain Scientologists have in the entertainment The church industry. as a whole, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and in and other positions of power too, but they clearly think that the media 
is a great way to spread their influence. Mm -hmm. And she said that one aspect of this is they take paparazzi photos of her, yep. intentionally making them unflattering to frame her as jobless, old, washed up. They call her a bigot. I want, to, I, I seriously want somebody to make a movie where a guy uh, escapes his life in Scientology and becomes a TMZ photographer with the skills he learned from, from stalking people on behalf of the church. So here is from her post. I've been doing something unfamiliar and uncomfortable lately, saying yes instead of no to opportunities that involve leaving my home and venturing into the world. This is a big deal for me because in recent years, I've said no to a lot, from invitations to go out with friends, to attending events and traveling. As some of you know, since I escaped from Scientology in 2013, I've been followed constantly by Scientology operatives and agents. These people hide in the shadows to monitor my movements and who I'm meeting with so they can report back to Scientology's intelligence agency, the Office of Special Affairs, which reports directly to David Miscavige. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, I think uh, Miscavige, I think, right? Miscavige. Yeah. They also snap unflattering pictures of me to body shame me and use these photos in their latest campaigns in an attempt to undermine and destabilize me. I also love that they go back there and we've got like the next level on the rung of, of truth. It's like flipping through the photos like, no, no, looks too nice. No, oh, now that one, one. That is good. That their is posts good. include salacious headlines similar to Leia with no job, abandoned by Hollywood because she's a bigot. She's a, they she call was me a king of queens for like a gazillion years. She doesn't need to work. They call me a bigot because I oppose Scientology's abusive practices. They're saying it's pronounced mis uh, miscabbage, miscabbage, miscabbage. I don't believe that for Ms. a Cabbage. second. Uh, there, it's interesting that they're using the language of bigot to defame her because that's what's trendy right now. Uh, and Leia sitting alone because she has no friends that they hope will have an impact on me psychologically, but also on people who are in my life or might consider being in my life. Um, yep. And I think she ought to mention they're using this as a scare tactic against their own members so that they have more fear about leaving the ranks. Well, right? also, yeah, and, and also like it, it encourages people to not even join your friend circle because why would you for a lot of people it's like then it becomes dangerous to even be around this person because you don't know if you're going to then be followed sure but i think that more so they're making an example out of her so mm -hmm. that people are more fear fearful of leaving the cult mm -hmm. and that's what the practice of shunning is all about i know that mormons have a practice of shunning as well but that might be the more fundamentalist groups Scientology has gone from those tactics, which are bad enough, to hiring vulnerable people living with severe mental illness to harass and intimidate me. These people who are being exploited by a tax-exempt organization with religious status do not know who they're working for or why they're doing it. Among the many things they've done is break into my gated community. Scientology has no problem putting me, my family, my friends, and those I work with in danger. So I guess she's suggesting the Church of Scientology is approaching mentally ill homeless people and giving them jobs to harass and stalk her on their behalf, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. Like they're just, I don't know, picking these people up in a van on the street and there's no legal recourse for this. I, it's insane. Church is too powerful anyways. Nothing would end up happening. And I guess like when you state at this extremely, people don't think about Scientology that often. They might think you're overstating it, but it's kind of the biggest cult in the country. Uh, to this day, yeah, in a lot of ways. And one that you don't hear a lot about, even in ho even from Hollywood. They have the documentaries. A couple of documentaries have been made. And certainly a lot of people cover it, but you don't see a whole lot of it from the mainstream sources on a regular basis. Yeah, like, do we even know how many people are in the Church of Scientology? I don't know. Or would they even tell us the, you <laughs> the number? No, anyways, it's uh, it's crazy. And for these types of stories, I always wonder. For her, like, she doesn't need to work, right? She she's made her money. If she if she doesn't want to work again, she didn't have to. Those reruns are still playing to this day. You think the money is that good for us? Yes. Oh yeah. It's because it's a network. It was a network show. It was on for a lot of years. Those replays are on all the time. She's yeah. making she's making good money off that mm -hmm. show. If you if you like have like um that kind of stuff where it's where it's uh I forget what they call it when you go into syndication. There you syndication. go. Um, you're getting paid. Yep. 
if you're a star, you're getting paid. Those, you don't have to uh, work. Those anymore. actors from Friends make hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, like Let's I mean, go. like like I've said this before, like all that remains is is like a successful band and stuff, but it's not like syndicated television and like yeah, it, it pays all my bills, you know. I, the songs that I wrote, you know, a decade ago were paying my bills, you know? So, so each year for the broadcast right of syndicated reruns of Friends, each member gets 2% of the billion dollars. So they all make about $20 million annually. Damn. So she, she's probably doing fine. But the thing is, people don't always work because they need to work. No. Even though she doesn't need to work, she wants to work and she wants to have a life. And it's kind of difficult when you're going up against someone as powerful in Hollywood as Tom Cruise. Uh, I've seen some articles in the last year that says that he's starting to distance himself from the church. I think we had something. We talked about that on the show one time. This isn't just me running cover for Tom Cruise because I'm the world's biggest Tom Cruise fan. How has um, he substantively distanced himself from were Scientology? Saying, like, he though. was like in the town where the headquarters is for two weeks and didn't visit once, which they said was a very big deal. But I would still believe that they have a serious control over his PR yeah. moves and maybe distancing himself from Scientology in public knowledge is just a PR move because he's still a practicing Scientologist. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise stepping away from controversial religion of Scientology. Here's what we know. This was from August of this year. Um, and a lot of people just don't remember it for him. Like most people don't associate him immediately with Scientology. It comes back. Now they think about Top Gun or they think about Mission Impossible. Then they think about him jumping on the couch. Then they might think of it yeah. takes it takes someone reminding you yes. to come bring, or it takes thinking about him for a little bit or reminding you because yes. like you said, it's like Top Gun. Then, you know, maybe it's uh, Jerry uh, Maguire. Yeah, you know, something like that. There have been claims that Tom Cruise is second in command in Scientology. I don't know if I buy that. Is there proof of that? Yeah, I don't think that's true. That would be. I mean, obviously he has ties, but I don't think I've ever heard that before. Did I say August 2024? It was August 2023, obviously. Um, Leia Ramini called Cruz's actions grooming and his attempt to make you feel like he's normal. This is so typical of Hollywood. Seriously, when you people don't wake up, and uh, Ramini shared this on TikTok, um, but this is like the re the response you're gonna get is f you I liked Top Gun Maverick so <laughs> that's my response mm -hmm. yeah this is why they're Brad like, is, is actually Scientology sympathetic sci they're like sci Tom Cruise is a member of the the absolute abhorrent religion of Scientology I'm like yeah but did you see that ending to Top Gun Maverick I teared <laughs> up how bad could it be really yeah I think he's just kind of crazy I think he's just misunderstood. <laughs> Look, he's, he's just great cardio. He's always running. He's in great shape. He thanks you, the audience, for coming to his movies. He doesn't call you evil. How bad could he, he be? He does stunts like he wants to die. Yep. He does stunts like he's hoping one day one of them will kill him and he'll die doing what he loves. And that just, it, it comes off to me as a little bit unhinged. He, uh, he does he's good at what he does, but he's a little bit crazy. And we love him. Someone who's that like non-risk averse yeah. seems sociopathic right even though he's so charming that would also be a marker of sociopathy Perfect. yes absolutely <laughs> Perfect. he's charismatic he doesn't have any fear of his own life yeah so why would he care about yours yeah oh so... yeah like, okay actually that's an interesting point because somebody pointed out when when he got caught on the hot mic yelling at his uh, yelling at the people on set for not wearing their masks Right? Oh, yeah, that like, was no, no, really no. bad for his image. Um, it, did, it did nothing. It disappeared in like a week. But the point is, is like people are like, well, you know, he's trying to save people. People are dying. I was like, bro, he's funding the film. He's trying to make sure that he doesn't lose more money. He's trying to make sure no one sues him. Yes, is what he's exactly. Doing. Come on. <laughs> no, he's just saving lives and keeping us all safe under our diapers. That's what Tom Cruise is doing. Uh, but Leia Ramini, you know, that's the, like you said, the fact that she was born into it and it wasn't something she joined of her own volition. That's the saddest part. Yeah. If she joined she the Church of Scientology as an adult, then I would think that's a red flag about the way that you think and the way you operate in the world. Yep. But she had no choice in the matter. And it's just really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Let's All move right. on. Corey Anderson said, bet Kristen Stewart. Okay, I'm not going to say that. 60 Watt said, personally, I'm against the rating system since it actively shapes and alters the media we consume. Media is made to fit the desired ratings. Yeah, and they have to they have to consider it whenever they get their ratings for these movies. And again, these are, this is done by the MPAA, which is just, that's still subjective. It's still a board of people. 
that have to make these determinations. Do you think it's like you would raise that to the level of censorship or is it? Um, Because it's the it's the directors that want a, form a certain of, a soft A form of soft censorship in a way. Um, that it's up to you or I to decide for ourselves whether that level of soft censorship uh, on behalf of society is really all that fair or good for us. Um, but how many movies were made better because they were forced to, to change things? I couldn't tell you that number. Like how many movies were made better because they had to structurally change whether it's a horror movie. I, I mean, for instance, what... Wouldn't society have been better if Showgirls had gotten an R rating rather than an NC-17 rating? I think so, but what do I know? Well, you would never know because that's not the version you got to watch. Exactly. 60 Watt, or sorry, um, Pat the Plumber said, my triggers are people, places, and things. I hope you're not uh, living in a, a padded so, so cell. Na nouns? <laughs> nouns. <laughs> Let's do two more. Gal Gadurp said, getting Kim K style plastic surgery today is just the current version of the Jennifer Aniston haircut in the 90s. Ladies are independent, don't you know? They, it's a little more extreme. I mean, this, there is yeah, surgery. Yeah, definitely is more expensive, more invasive. I mean, there are, it, both involve cutting, but you know. I'd rather a haircut be the trend yeah. than cutting pieces of your nose off. The ramifications are significantly, uh, <laughs> are, are, more, are more significant, yeah. Do one more. Corey Anderson said, Hefland, let's hear Mary and Brett sing WAP. Ugh, no, cool. thanks. That's Please don't do that. All right. Let's well, now go. you're going to because I told you not to. Yeah, they're going to put it into uh, AI. You yeah. guys are going to have to listen to this absolutely insane story about Jennifer Lopez. It is the largest mm -hmm. exercise in narcissism we may have ever seen in society. Yeah, obviously Ben Affleck has become the symbol of the beleaguered man, the buck broken man, the simp. Ever since he got back with Jennifer Lopez after their split in 2004, Every time that we see him in paparazzi photos, he's sad fleck. He looks like he is totally dejected, empty inside. I will say he this has sad a broken fleck. down will. He is a ben husk of his fleck. former self. I will say if you're coming home, uh, if you're coming home to this, you know, how bad could it be? Cheer but, up, man. But maybe look, she's actually crazy. So for, there's two things coming home to that, right? Like you said. And also, he's always smoking cigarettes. That's kind of great. <laughs> Like, He's always I'm, smoking a cigarette and picking up his Dunkin' Donuts coffee while looking like he wants to end his own life. He I made mean, ten like, million I, dollars on that Dunkin' Donuts ad from the uh, from the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, and he's got a lot of money. I mean, I understand. <laughs> I understand women can be trifling. But Call still. me a conspiracy theorist, but I personally was would trace that back to a toxic relationship. And it's just been announced that Jennifer Lopez is releasing a three-part multimedia project. Self-funded. Called This Is Me Now. It's a follow-up to her 2002 album, This Is Me Then. And it includes her new album. Also a, gen uh, a genre mixing musical movie about her love life for the past 20 years and thirdly she's releasing a documentary about the making of that movie and the album as a whole package and she's filling and she's providing all the funds herself she, she paid funding 20 million dollars of her own money out of pocket to produce this the budget is insane you know the rich husbands who like their wives start a jewelry business this is like <laughs> it's that on a whole this is that other on a whole, level. except for she has her own money she's and actually, look she's probably worth as much as him this would be one thing more. if it were just about her but in the process she is dragging ben affleck into it because the big crescendo at the end of the love story is her getting back with ben affleck and she is publicizing all of the previously private details of their relationship, including sharing private love letters that he gave to her years ago oh. in a committee writing meeting. She's worth double what he's worth, so. Ben Affleck says he was shocked that Jennifer Lopez shared his love letters with songwriters for This Is Me Now. <sighs> He walked in while they were all sorting through these love letters that he titled The Greatest Love Story Never Told, not, where not, the documentary gets its name. Not never anymore. He oh, then joked that using God. his letters to help tell their story was ironically going against the title itself. 
I did really find beauty and poetry and irony in the fact that it's the greatest love story never told. If you're making a record about it, that kind of seems like telling it. And he said this was an adjustment for him, because which means that he's buck broken and he's letting her I'm walk all if, over him and humiliate him because he's a simp. If, I Give wonder me if what it is, is, is like, look, he was, he's, a, he's got a well-documented uh, history of, of substance abuse and of, of alcoholism, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it might have just felt so like during his marriage to Jennifer Garner, which of course was way more, seemed way more stable and healthy for him. Like he's just so like, just numb to everything. He's like, I just need to feel something again. I, Even if it's pure terror and sadness. I, I, mean, I tell you what, man, he's, I, I just can't get over how much it looks like he's enjoying those smokes. They do look like the well, only thing uh, he enjoys. He yeah. enjoys visits with the kids. Dunkin' Donuts. And Dunkin' Donuts and cigarettes. Look, and that's I'm, really all he has left. I'm from Massachusetts, I get it about Dunkin' Donuts. Let's uh, let's watch this trailer for this, guys. Get ready. This is uh, this is something you are, else. Are, whatever you think this is, you're not prepared for it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think this is definitive proof that every person who calls themselves a hopeless romantic is just insane. They just have mental problems. Because I've never heard someone call themselves a hopeless romantic and them not be crazy. This is the unchecked narcissism of a 54-year-old woman that just got back with her boyfriend from the early 2000s. Now she's gonna, she's, well, she's terrorizing the world, but at least she's filling a lot of people, she's giving a lot of people jobs, she's so there. I'll give her that. It's just funny that this is kind of the opposite of everything that the red pill movement might say about what a, a high value man like Ben Affleck would want in life. He's letting her make a whole movie about her relationships, her past marriages to several different men. Well, incorporating his stories that he gave to her he, in private. Yeah, humiliating him in the process. And he's just Projecting like, all of his emotional vulnerability that he thought was private onto the world. Yep. And a movie that is essentially dedicated to herself and how special she is. Yes. Yep. It's insane. I just feel like not enough people are talking about this. $20 million it cost? That, uh, looks uh, of more her expensive own money. Well, and I'm, it looks like it would be more expensive given the, all of that CGI. She's got it. It's insane. She's worth, she's worth $400 million. He's worth about $190 million. She what if she like asked him for funding? She's like, can your studio produce this? <laughs> <laughs> No, he actually did help her with making the movie. She said this in her interview. And she also said that when she was asking friends or other celebrities to, thank you, to be involved in the movie with her, they were like, are you sure this is a good idea? Like, She's like what do you mean? What do you mean is it a good idea? It is like, this is, this is more than just a vanity project. A vanity project is like a fictional one where you like, I've always wanted to play a superhero. I've got money. I'll make my own superhero movie. This is like, I've always wanted to see myself as myself on screen. I'm going to make the movie. She's just really making the fact that she is absolutely crazy into an artistic cinematic experience i can't wait for 20 years from now when like ben and will smith make their own version of this like ben like him and, <laughs> like they make their oh, own oh if if that would be crazy be great they'll call it buck broken yes buck broke mountain <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, this, it'll be so insane if they end up divorcing again. It's, at this point, can you even can you even do that? Well, I'm sorry, they never got divorced, but they called yes. off their wedding back in 2003, very last minute. I think like days ahead of time, and they stayed together for a while, but broke up the next year. So this is the first time they've been married. Ben, ben should get his revenge by making Gili Two Electric Boogaloo. Um, we'll do that. Most people would rather watch a Gili 2 Correct. than whatever the hell this is. Correct. Correct. Um, some comments. The budget for this randomly seems so insane. Yep. Uh, another one said, Jennifer everywhere all at once. <laughs> She's like <laughs> giving... <laughs> Everything everywhere all at once. A blockbuster movie budget, essentially, to an Amazon original. And this isn't even the end of it. She still has to release the documentary about making it. Yes. 
presuming that anyone gives a shit. She's, she also <laughs> did this interview where she's trying to explain what this is to people and she can't even do it because it's like nine different things all at once. Yeah, that's like... She's like, it's kind of a music video. Well, it's okay, kind of let a movie. me. It's kind of a documentary. Let me try to explain. Yeah. It's a partly animated musical journey through many of the songs on her new album with Post Malone, Sofia Vergara, oh. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Kiki Palmer, and other famous randos. They're all on a Zodiac Love Council examining Lopez's romantic foibles. Yep. There is a special appearance by Sad Guru which according to the documentary added another 200,000 to the film's budget. And Ben Affleck is in it playing a wizened TV commentator. If it all sounds a little more than nuts to you, you are not alone. Her inner nuts. circle has right. been telling her from the start that this project might be a really bad idea. And she <laughs> has been having a career renaissance. She's saying at the Biden inauguration, the 2020 Super Bowl, she was just in The Mother and uh, another new movie called Shotgun Wedding. Um, but the world was not enough. So now she is celebrating the reunion of her and Ben Affleck with this. Well, somebody on Twitter named Jake Who Remains uh, posted this picture. Um, I, I do love Twitter's response to this, which is just posting pictures of Sad Fleck. It's literally... I, 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 <laughs> they had the premiere for this uh, this movie last night, mm -hmm. um, ironically on Valentine's Day, and they were filmed talking to each other at the premiere. And Ben Affleck looks like he's telling her off. I don't think so. That was look. They were in a loud room. That it didn't come off that way to me. Also, in her speech at the premiere, she said, "I know that Ben hates this and he doesn't want me to do this, but, but fuck him. But f it, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go for She's it. Like, I don't respect him at all as a human being or as a husband. Mm. So just like yeah. I'm gonna do it anyways. Girl <laughs> power. Also, random note. My love don't cost a thing except for $20 million to make this movie. <laughs> Both of them have 15-year-old uh, daughters who identify as non-binary and go by they, them pronouns, which is... Shocking. Imagine my shock. There's a $20 super chat here from Gordon Shumway. says, Affleck is the 2020s Al Bundy. Broken, emasculated, <laughs> and miserable. Please get the man a copy of Biggins. P.S. Polk High School Football Rules. Yes, <laughs> did Ben Affleck uh, r score how many touchdowns in the state championship? I don't even know. It's like um, almost worse than what Jada is doing to Will Smith. Because at no, least at least no, so. at least Jada owns the fact that she kind of hates Will's guts. <laughs> and Jennifer, on the other hand, is putting on this front, this facade that she is obsessed with Ben Affleck and she worships at his feet when in reality she treats him as subhuman, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it's strong language, but it's Jennifer Lopez. You wouldn't really hold her to the same standard as other people. If anyone you knew did something like this, you would think that they were going insane and needed to be institutionalized. The ultimate plot twist on this would be that Ben divorces her, gets the settlement because he makes less money and becomes the richer celebrity. And he gets his private love letters back too. Let's go. Oh, they, those are no. Those aren't going to be private. That's crazy. They're going to be love, out in the... He gets the alimony. And he rides off into the sunset with Jennifer Garner again. It's, a, it's actually a plan. Uh, they divorced on purpose so that he could remarry Jennifer Lopez. It's all a plot. Take her money and then ride off in the sunset and make uh, Daredevil and Elektra 2. <laughs> Love that for him. Let's go. Okay, let's go to Super Chats. Shane H. Wilder said, am I the only one that saw that picture of Kathy Griffin and thought it was Carrot Top? <laughs> you wouldn't be the first one to make such a comparison. Pat the Plumber said, can you make Mary and Brett sing Paradise by by Dashboard Lights? Could be worse. Could be Dashboard Conventional. Yeah. I don't even think that's bad. Latveria said, the audacious jumping spider is cute as a button. There you go. John Quixote said, Croc Star? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Did you get the one from Amtrue13? That was the next one. Okay, it's it's before on mine. Um, he said all the LGBT plus 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 trans. <laughs> I'm not gonna say the other terms. Whatever you want to call yourself, it's still about having sex unless you remove your own body parts. SMH. Not sure what point that was trying to make, honestly. Shane H. Wilder said, in regards to the magazine story, you three are making me hungry with all the cooking y'all are doing today. 
Let them cook. 60 Watts said, hashtag, not all men can grow a mustache. Kristen, get a life. I love you guys. Phil, I'm a fan of All That Remains, Thunder Rolls cover. Thanks for that. Thank you so much. Corey Anderson said, Commies Don't Surf is an awesome band name. There you go. Corey Anderson, do the cute of the day pets count as crisis actors? Yes. They yes, are, they they are um, unofficial crisis actors. We accept crisis actors of all species, unless they're furries. Bucky Ducky said, Mary, how dare you hate on Steve? Shame on you. Who? I don't know who Steve is. Who's Steve? Mm. Is it the spider? <laughs> oh, maybe I don't know. It could be Steven. Um... Oh, Destiny? Could be. We have a uh, Destiny fan in the chat? I don't know. Connor Kana Doyle said, Phil made my year when he recently uh, made me realize I was born on the fifth anniversary of the dissolution of the USSR. <laughs> yeah! Let's go! Happy December 26th birthday! That's funny. Gal Gadurp said, I had spinal surgery in 2017. She she THC has been a lifesaver rather than keeping me on the couch. It dulls nerve pain so I can chase goats and dogs. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like if you got to do that or, you know, you're going to end up with something like gabapentin, which is, uh, you know, its own thing. I would always say, like, for the most part, uh, there's a lot of ridiculous laws in effect right now. For instance, being able to own a gun if you take uh, opiates, but not if you uh, are prescribed a THC, which is, of course, ridiculous. All sorts of ridiculousness like that. Organized biz business services said, is everyone fighting on Timcast? Phil is fighting on Timcast. Guess fighting on Timcast may lose money. YouTube, Brett, I hope you own PPC and rent space from Tim. What on earth was he saying? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, I, I mean, I guess it's in reference to fighting with Destiny. Well, the, yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's Destiny and I going back and forth, and also Tim's going back and forth a little bit with James Lindsay. I'm not sure if they're oh, actually going back okay. and forth or not, or maybe it's just a little bit, but uh, that might be what he's talking about. Uh, I don't imagine. That any of this is a financial worry for Tim Cast IRA. What I've realized <laughs> to clear it up, we don't own Pop no. Culture Crisis. No, we're employees here. But what what I what I've also realized is like for most people, like they leave Twitter at the door and they're still willing to to come and have a disagreement on air or come even even if they agree on air. I, mm -hmm. I've always found that weird. Like I've even seen people who work here like get into fights with people, and I'm like, not necessarily the the greatest look but you know whatever I mean, leaving twitter at the door is one thing but destiny literally said that i hate abuse victims like if you're just straight up lying that's different <laughs> than mean, having a twitter beef over something you know? i mean look he's just a bad guy right like he's he's just a pile <laughs> like he's just not a good a dude. pile he's a pile so we're not gonna say of what tacti platy said phil that's a good range i recommend oh okay awesome cool Oh my goodness, said uh, Lana Del Rey, my baby mama, just manifesting. There you uh, go. Good, good idea. <laughs> what about wife? Can we aspire to something better there than baby go. mama? There you go. <laughs> I, I back this Mary, as well. Mary believes in you guys. See, remember when I said that I wanted to collaborate with Taylor Swift, I didn't say that I wanted to just, you know, put a baby in. I want to collaborate on a family, so. Yeah. But, you know, Travis. Ann ML said, help, I was watching the testimony of DA Fanny Willis, and she scared me. Thank heaven for PCC. It was a big mistake to watch something else. I cannot wait to find out what's going on. I've been reading a little bit on Twitter, but I don't want to get too distracted, but I can't wait to find out what happened because apparently it was a meltdown and she's made a mess of the whole thing, so. Okay, anyway. um, what is the currency N-O-K? Do you know? That was just sent in an N-O-K. Oh, is it, um, oh, I don't know. Norway or something? North Korea, let's go! North Korea? <laughs> Do we have any crisis actors in North Korea? Korea. I, I would love to know. Somebody in the chat, what is N-O-K? Uh, Ryan Hudson said, need at IRL with Phil and Destiny would be awesome. Also, Phil, thanks for being so responsive on X. Wife is a huge fan since you've been on IRL. Cheers. As soon as she hears you on IRL, she yells, Phil! <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Takti Platy. You're saying it's Norwegian. Norway. Oh, okay. I got it right. Takti Platy said, Brett, your hair is looking extra on fleek today. Well, thank you. How do you do it? I have no idea. <laughs> What's I, your secret? Mary, I wake up like this. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, hear ye, hear ye. From henceforth, Ben Affleck shall be known as Ben Sadfleck. So say one, so say we all. In all honesty, he needs out of this relationship. I have Probably a, um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I don't know if I still have it because I deleted most of it. I had a Sadfleck folder on, in, on like my Instagram saves 
of like just Ben Affleck looking sad. Because there are so many of them. Yes. <laughs> Corey Anderson said taco flavored kisses for my Ben. <laughs> yes. Corey Anderson, we are but maggots writhing in the filth of our own corruption. That is what I think about the J-Lo movie. Mm. Maybe it's just money laundering. Shane H. Wilder said, what the heck did I just watch? Was the 20 mil all spent on the pointless CGI? Yes. It's like Salvador Dali if he was dropped on his head as a child. Let's go. That's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. Annie still sent four ninety nine without a message. Thank you. Thank you. Bucky Ducky said, Steve was the spider. How did y'all forget already? I, bro. I wanted to forget that as quickly as possible. I, I don't remember anything. Like, but like, by the end of this show, this stuff all just evaporates from my brain and I have to start new every day. It's kind of like in Memento. Like every, I have to like mail clues back to myself about what I talked about the previous days just so I can know what the hell we've discussed. <laughs> We're like in um, Severance on Apple TV+, Plus, which no one has. Yep. Uh, we got one more there from Bucky Ducky. You got that one? Phil, I don't like Destiny, but I feel like you totally misrepresented his argument entirely. You don't have a good argument for how he was rude to you. Thoughts? Don't care. <laughs> Why does everything have to be an argument? Well, it's just, it, like like I said, I mean, he just he wasn't like he was the only guy that wasn't nice. That's all I said. Like he wasn't he was the only person that like when you meet them, they weren't he wasn't like, "Oh, hey, That's nice how to meet an you. angsty teenager Acts at a family reunion. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was it was very <laughs> angsty teenager, and like it wasn't the end of the world. And I I didn't you know I, I didn't go and like tag him and put it on my main or whatever. It's not like he drop kicked you or something. Yeah, you but... know. So, but uh, as for you know, he's the one who overreacted dramatically. You look at the big long screen. He put it is like a. I like am the talent. Ten, ten page paragraph talking to me like I I've never been in a privacy. green room. You know. Like I've never, been, like I've never been backstage or whatever. So Gal Gadurp said the difference is a Britney Spears can do her blades and bikini dance, and people will stand for her. Affleck fails to hide sadness and gets clowned on. Leave Ben alone. Does that mean that Ben Affleck needs to start dancing around on Instagram like Britney Spears? I'd yes. Rather, uh, yes. Well, make I everyone mean, think that he's happy. Probably be the same kind of results from or the same response from people. They'd be like, "What is wrong with him?" <laughs> I yeah, mean, that's what they said about him marrying Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with him? It's a red flag. Corey Anderson said justice for Steve, not for Mocha. There will be zero, zilch, nada, nunya, no justice for the derpy cat. Not now, not ever. Bucky Ducky <laughs> said, "Sounds like Brett is living in reverse Groundhog Day." Probably, yeah, pretty much. I, I wake up every day and just start anew. It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. All right, guys, before we go, uh, actually, I, I, do you want to hang out? We can hang out. Otherwise, we can we can do outros. I'm down to hang out. Somebody said Ben Affleck OnlyFans. I don't want to Ben Affleck what? OnlyFans. He is making The Accountant, too. I don't know if you guys saw that. I thought I was the only one who liked The Accountant, but he's making a sequel to it. No word whether uh, What's-Her-Name from Pitch Perfect will also be returning. What was the the popular girl from Pitch Perfect? The star? Anna Kendrick? Anna Kendrick. She was in that movie. She was about it. She had about as much acting talent as Dakota Johnson in that film. I think she's better at acting um, than Dakota Johnson. No, uh, what yes, I'm saying, but it was it was very bland. There's uh, two more. There's a $20 one there from Dreamcast Night. Amy Schumer is a trendsetter. While everyone is removing buckle fat, she was like, nah, doc, I want to look like a squirrel getting ready for winter. <laughs> she's like, I'll take your buckle fat and put it on my face. They're actually donating it to yes. her. Shane H. Wilder said, Mary, apparently someone thinks you mispronounce my name. For the record, you do not. What do they think it is? Wilder? Shanae? Sinead, <laughs> Sinead, Sinead H. Nay Wildebeest. Shanae Nay Wilder. <laughs> Glad to know I got it right. Gordon Shumway said, Phil, are you going to add diva to your intro to go along with failed musician? <laughs> no, uh, I'm trying to, I don't think the diva, I'm not, I mean, I'm not the one that's the diva, you know, I'm not, I'm not the one that's like, I need to have my separate alone space. I'm the guy that's like, hey, you just can't be like, nice to meet you. Look me in the eye, you know, stand up, smile like a you know, adult. The thing is like, people talk about like, you know, we're missing positive masculinity. One of the things that is is considered positively masculine is you stand up, look someone in the eye, smile, shake their hand. Strong like, handshake. Yes, it's 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 not the dead fish handshake kind of like, eh, hi, nice to meet you. It's like, Ugh. you know, it, Ugh. Yeah, it's like just just act like a guy. Just stand up and be nice. Be a normal person. I do the two hand handshake. There you go. Do you can do that or you can do the, the, wow. the yeah. forearm or elbow grab. The yeah. elbow's safe. 
I've never done the elbow grip. I always do the hand on top. Yep, that is very good because it, it's... Uh, it allows um, me to lean in more. Like okay. I, I lean in to do it. I've put a lot of thought into this. You can, it, it also, all, I, I will say, it, it, it adds to closeness to, to yeah. uh, there's a, a, it makes it like a, 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 an acceptable embrace. I hate the, the green room in general interactions because I always get down there. Um, I, I'm usually working, right? And by the time I'm done with editing sure. the show, they're already up there for IRL. But on the rare occasion that I get done earlier, you know, I go down there and everyone's kind of immersed in conversation and there's no like stray person who I can just go walk up to, to, to start engaging with. So you have to figure out, so who am I going to interrupt? And then, <laughs> and then you decide whether you want to do that. But most of the time I go down and just look for something to eat and then leave. It's easy. It's but easy to just go. If and... somebody wants to talk to me, they can, but I always feel like I'm interrupting people. I like, I mean, I, it's, it's weird to explain like how to do social interactions, but like if you're in a group of people or you walk into a group of people and they're standing around, usually they're in kind of a circle, just walk up to the circle. People will, people will slowly make room and, and this will be an unspoken thing. You can just walk up and stand there. And then when everyone's talking, you can go ahead and interject. It's, it's, it's not hard. My hope. You should actually teach a course yes. on this to I mean, help these out things, people who need to hear these you know things. legitimately the like the the idea that it's it's ridiculous to say you should stand up and look someone in the eye and and smile and shake their hand these are the very basics of etiquette and i i know that nobody goes to edit etiquette school or anything but there used to be actual like finish like schools that people would go to to learn yeah. the high etiquette it was called finishing schools and you would go and learn how to behave a like a now. civilized fucking human being that doesn't happen anymore. People can't even be bothered to use punctuation because that's too assertive. My uh, embarrassing. My hope is that whoever I've ever inter anyone I've ever interacted with here is never um, thought like I, I was trying to be rude. I, I don't think many people would say that about me. I don't think so. No, everyone loves you. Except for like D Dane does point out that on on bur on you know Burger Day on Fridays. I show up downstairs when the food gets here. I take my food and then I immediately abscond with well, it. I mean, we, we have more of an excuse because we have a deadline every day where we have to be prepared for the yes. show. So. And I'm like, uh, so Dane posts the, the Tiger Woods big dog meme. So it's me. I come downstairs. <laughs> yeah. I get my food and I'm like, all right, well, I got to go. Bye, guys. Corey Anderson said, what do we want? Justice for Steve. When do we want it? Soon. There will be probably no justice for Steve either, but there's even less of a chance of being justice for the awful cat. Bucky Ducky said, I don't want to be the guy defending Destiny, but he works online. Maybe he was doing something important on his phone and not just being an ass. A hundred percent don't care. If someone comes up to you in person and you're going to go and you're like at a place where you're going to go on to a show and they say, hey, how you doing? You, you greet the person in your presence. You're wrong to say, oh, I'm busy on my phone. That is impolite and not friendly. <laughs> if you want to be friend, now you don't have to. But if you want to be considered friendly, you engage with the human beings that are around you. If you want to seem aloof and unfriendly, you stick your, your face in your phone and then you don't talk to people. This, this is not about, this, thank you. This is not about whether or not like he has the right to do any of those things. He did those things, it's fine. But because he did, it is accurate to say he's unfriendly. That's hilarious, that's the dance going on while we're doing this. <laughs> I just feel like if there are people you need to explain this to, they were never, they never had a chance of understanding. No, that, that's the, the thing. I, I, it's like I'm literally talking to the most autistic <laughs> human beings, and and it's like it's like the, it's like this just group of like helmet wearing morons just <laughs> get in, wearing. jump into my mentions, and are like, I have no idea how to deal with human beings. So you're wrong for for having like actual social skills. They'll kind Listen, of defend anything that course. Destiny does or because says. Because they're wearing so. helmets. They're, they, they're all he, him, and she, her, and yeah. left his best in helmets and, you know, drooling and picking their nose. They're, it's it's the, all the people that are, that are on Destiny's sides, they're, they're all socially retarded. Also, you can have an excuse and still be the asshole yeah. in the situation. Yeah, like the, the, <laughs> the idea that he's saying you were wrong, I was right to blow you off. 
That's the most socially awkward thing you can think of. I guess if it was me, what would happen is I'd be like, yes, oh, I, I, I was doing something and I didn't quite hit the mark on that one. I apologize. My bad. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's all it takes. And then there's the yeah. proper, because what you're doing is you're saying, okay, maybe I did. I'm accepting your, your premise. Now the, the proper response to that is, oh, it's no big deal. No problem at all. Cool. And then everything's fine. When we that's were how at, people interact like human beings. Yeah. When we were at um, <laughs> the Lady Ballers premiere, and then at the Lady Ballers after party, every social interaction I had just felt like the biggest swing and a miss. Like I struck out like every, it, I don't think it actually didn't actually go that way, but I was so tired <laughs> from being up for so long, right? Yeah. Like I was so overtired that every, it was like it was my own awkwardness inside that probably wasn't even visible in the interaction. But to me, I'm like, oh wow, like, I need to like go back to school or something. I need to learn how to deal with people again. Holy crap. Yeah. The interviews went fine, yeah. but the the whole actually having to socialize, like I'm talking, we were talking to like Ted Cruz's, um, uh, like his campaign people. Oh, really? And mm -hmm. I'm like, why am I talking to Ted Cruz's kid? Like, can I, I just no, <laughs> just, just no. Um, this is crazy. So you recorded the green room earlier before the show yeah. to show what this green room looks like, which it doesn't look like a green room. It looks like a living room. It's, yeah, it's, it's just like, it's a social room for he said, people to bro, I shook your hand and oh. said, hi, what do you want from me? If someone is sitting on the couch working on something in a room where they are preparing to go on a show, it's considered a green room. They don't actually have to be green to walk up to someone well, sitting on a couch and preparing for from. a show and then expecting them to have a full conversation with you is unbelievably entitled. I, I can't even believe how this man get, can like gets around without people smashing his face in. <laughs> like like you see, you act like that is difficult for you. Like how do you manage to order food? Like that is incredible. It's shocking. Incredible. Teenage Wilder said they thought you said teenage Wilder. LOL. Oh. Okay. Well, I assume you're not a teenager. John Quixote said, Brett, Stephen Amell was cast in the Suits sequel. Yep. I'm assuming in the Harvey role. <laughs> thoughts? I'll give it a shot. Okay, my thoughts. First of all, I was under the impression that this was supposed to be about a female lawyer that had been cast, uh, that they were that they were talking about. Well, he's about. not the protagonist. The, there was nothing in the article that statement right? made that statement one way or the other. If he's cast in the lead role in that, they're lightly talking maybe about... Maybe he's trans. He's... Uh, it, it, maybe, that, maybe that's what it is. Uh, I love Stephen Amell. I think he's an underrated actor. I think he's kind of like... A, the best comparison I ever heard made was saying that much like James Spader didn't get the credit he deserved as an actor until he got ugly and bald, uh, then people started to realize how talented he was. I think Stephen Amell was actually just kind of too pretty to act and, and was working on a CW series. So he's, uh, he's talented. He knows what he's doing. We'll have to wait and see. I, I don't remember his, uh, his Oliver Queen character. You know, when he has to play Oliver Queen and not the Arrow, which is a spoiled, rich, pretty boy, could play a part in this. Will I give it a shot? Probably not. Because it doesn't need to be made. And Suits was uh, a masterpiece of its time that doesn't need to have a cinematic universe at all. <clears throat> Francisco Sanchez Jr. said nothing masculine about Steven. No. So, yes, yeah, Stephen Amell, not Stephen Bonnell. Uh. Mm. Corey Anderson said, Phil, to be fair, Destiny is a cuck. That's what he said. I mean, yes, that's true. That was a super chat. That is not what I'm saying. Okay, I'm not reading that next one. Shane H. Wilder said, I'm gonna have to clip Brett and Mary dancing while Phil is cooking. I loved that moment. Gordon Shumway said, I'm Destiny. I'm a teenage girl. I'd rather be anywhere but here. I'm all about long, sullen silences, followed by mean comments, followed by more silences. So what's it gonna be, huh? <laughs> uh. Corey Anderson said, Phil, when did this interaction take place? I don't remember when it was like last year sometime. But again, like I just saw something that Adam Friend had tweeted about Destiny being uncharitable to conservatives. And my response was, he's the only guy that wasn't friendly that I've ever met or that I ever met at the podcast that, that wasn't friendly, you know, so. And, and then he took, he took a big, he had a big problem with me saying that he was not friendly. So, I mean, if you have a problem with that, you could. Be I am friendly. Fuck you. You could be friendly. You know? <laughs> Talk to you, Pilates said, I remember waving to Brett, then walking up to him. 
Yes, me and Tacti had, a, had an excellent conversation when we when I saw him at the event in D.C. That was good. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot that happened. My hope is that uh, whoever has interacted with me in person does not uh, leave it thinking, like, how does this guy live in polite society? <laughs> like, Okay, I'm not going to read the next one. Okay, all right, that's guys. That's all for today. Before we go, hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Phil, my friend, let everyone know where they can find you. I uh, in the green room. No <laughs> I am Phil that remains on twix i am phil it remains official on instagram the band is all that remains you can follow us on spotify apple music pandora uh amazon music youtube you know the internet and when you and meet him, the left lane is for crime the left lane is definitely for crime and when you meet him guys shake his hand look him in the eye i will try not to look you in the eye if that's if that'll be a if that's gonna cause a problem <laughs> Mary. i'm flexible but just let me know <laughs> You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X that is also Mary Archived. There's one more here from Bucky Ducky. He says, if Destiny was busy and couldn't talk, what would have been the proper way to handle that situation? I mean, if you're waiting to go on a podcast, like unless you're doing something that's like actually an emergency... When you're in the green room socializing with people before you're supposed to go up with those very same people to be on a podcast, you talk to them like you're a human being. This is not some difficult thing. Maybe he was like memorizing some statistics that he can rattle off while he filibusters texting so that somebody forgets what point he's trying to make. I have so many other things that I think he was texting about or whatever, but I'm not going to say <laughs> Okay, all right. Now I'm going to do this again. Did I ask you for your socials? Yes, yes. you okay. did. Yesterday I remembered. Yesterday I remembered. <laughs> Guys, if you want to follow me, Instagram and Twix, at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. So if you see me out in public, you can just come up and shake my hand. I'll say hi back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this show is here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. We are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. If you would prefer to listen rather than watch. If you want to follow us on social media, we are on Twix, at PopCulture underscore show. Facebook and not TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis and on Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. Guys, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.